Daniel Lira. Hello, Kokiro. How are you? How are you, Daniel Lira? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> good, good, good. Um, excited to uh, take another stab at this mm -hmm. because I've been uh, a little frustrated in in terms of what I want to um, to happen with the um, with the image. Hence the, you know, relentless uh, search for that drawing um, that I still ha I'm, I'm still not happy with. I'm still not at all happy with. Do you know what is the thing that's not making you happy about it? Like, I can you pinpoint um, something specific about um, it? Um, I mean, that's the that's the toughest part. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. Can you? Because yeah. I know that sometimes it's just not that easy. But yeah. I think that's the toughest part because once you identify an issue, you can, you know, take steps into trying to fix it or to not let's let's not say fix it as if it's broken, but fix it as in taking it to the place that you want it to go to. Um, I don't know. I think at, at the beginning, I just uh, when I had all my shapes, um, you know, the, the last session that, that we were live. I realized that I wasn't happy with how much I was um, breaking each section into a very specific hue. So I had a problem with the fact that I thought there was going to be more unity to the uh, painting, granting it a bit more um, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And and obviously there is unity because all the um, all the tones were very analogous. They they're all coming from like the earth tone family. So even if you don't you know, without very little effort, um, the painting is going to look harmonious. But so that wasn't the issue. I mean, I, I couldn't mess that up even if I wanted to. So I was mad that I had broken sort of sections up mm -hmm. into, you know, you could clearly see where something was, um, let's say, black and white dominant, black and umber dominant, uh, black, um, um, white and ochre dominant, Uh, so that sort of stuff was a little frustrating that, that it just felt like a little bit, sh like a little, the shapes were a little too, almost like, uh, puzzle Separated? pieces. Yeah. Yeah. I think a little disjointed, I would say. Mm -hmm. So that I was very frustrated with the fact that yes, it was analogous, but not as atmospheric as I wanted. And then I, I think I stretched out the palette a little bit too much. So that was the first issue. So that one was more of a color issue, let's yeah. say. So I, I think I could have done a better job at organizing my, my sort of restricted palette a little bit better. And then the other one was that the shapes, in terms of drawing, they just weren't quite where I wanted them. Like, it, right now that I think the drawing is a little bit better, you can kind of see that I wasn't super off in some of those color shapes because, you know, if you look at, where the shoulder is and where the arm is, for example, it should sort of correspond with what, you know, the base color, um, the, the shape of the base color, where it is. But, so, so I wasn't quite off, but there were very little things that were just like, they, they just didn't feel quite right. So, so I, I, you know, I just wasn't happy and I know myself that when I'm not happy, I have to search again and again and again for all these little things. So I was like, oh, I'm going to just do some, you know, in my mind, I was like, I'm going to do some mark making and then I'm going to try to, um, you know, based on those little marks, I'm going to try to to um, uh, to go ahead and tackle the painting again. And the few marks ended up being this. So this is just a section of a painting, but the few marks ended up being all of this. Uh, so I got a little carried away because I started you know, searching and searching and searching for more stuff, um, which I'm fine. I'm fine with that. But the other thing is probably what's most annoying about the um, the actual drawing of it, like the not just the, the, you know, angles and distances of like a very abstract sense of drawing. There's still a sense of, um, I don't know. I think that there has to... There's a, there's um, a sentiment, I guess, that I'm looking for between these two portraits, mm -hmm. which I'm fine with my mother's. I actually shifted my mother's portrait a little bit so it, she's, she's sort of 
um, turning a little bit more towards my uh, niece. <clears throat> but I can't seem to be able to paint this freaking portrait. And the, the least of my worries is that it looks like my niece. Like, I wish that I could just easily make, make the uh, painting look like my niece. But it's not, that's not what I'm, that's not exactly what I want to do. What I want is like to, for the head to feel like it sits, like it's almost like sitting in the back and then the body just comes forward. Because I think a lot of the gestures, can we see the legs? Yeah. Yep. A lot of the gestures, which I, I really love the foreshortening of this leg and then this leg coming to the knee and then breaking down. So this one's coming at us and then this one comes at us and then breaks. I, I love that. I think that that's super beautiful and how the um, she had this this sort of, um, uh, what do you call that? Oh, it was kind of like a dress, but it looked like... Um, it's like a parka? I don't know how to call it. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like a trench coat. Yeah, it looked like a like a like a trench coat, yeah. trench coatish, uh, sort of dress like thing. Um, but the way it bunches up, it's really really nice. Um, and and the way the hands sort of intersect. There, I took other pictures that looked like a guercino with all the hands intersecting, like at this moment. It was very nice. I was in between doing that one and this one, and I kind of chose this one because it was very sweet. But one of the things that I love is just. The head sitting back and then the body just coming towards us. You know, in the... I um, can't do that. In the knee? Yeah. Of your knees? <laughs> yeah. My knees, knees. I mean, I, I don't know if it was intentional, but I love that the one that comes forward and falls the most, not the y other one. Okay. Is just where the paper bends. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so it, 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 no, I wish I could... I could. Uh, <laughs> I love that. I, I wish I could that's why design I I stuff like that. No intentional but no thank you but that was I, i won't take credit for something like super accidental i love that so. thank you but <laughs> yeah but this is this is not right no I but mean, i do feel that i mean what you were describing of the face just like sinking in and the body coming through i can see that yeah maybe you can't see it because you've been struggling yeah. with it yeah and you just need to kind of paint it to s actually see what yeah. you were trying to hint with the drawing but i do feel it like that i so know and thank you but no, I'm yeah just, i'm like I'm you not know this like nice i'm just trying to say something from a pair of eyes different than yours which yeah are the one that are creating the things you're doing because sometimes we just get kind of trapped and yeah we can't see it but you but you I know i think bo b we're both the same way like if we don't feel know, it's don't quite there it, don't see it. it's just not there so but my it's just my way of saying something that you always tell me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we always do that with like each other. Keep going. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep so going and you'll start to see it. Yeah. So I need to I need to um, I need to repaint this. That's pretty much it. Because I do think the, the body is doing the job. But this it's almost like it has to come from there and then it just kind of topples down. But if it doesn't sit properly here. It just doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't. So so we're going to struggle to try to... That's why we, we sectioned off the painting and we zoomed in on it a little bit so that we can concentrate on this. And the other thing is that, you know, while I'm struggling with that little part, um, I still want to do something in terms of value. I, I still want to tell, like, a story in terms of value. So what I originally had blocked in is something that I do want to pursue, which is that... I want the mass of her value to be super light, super, super light. So she's going to be like, um, I mean, and this is an obsession I've always had in my brain, but she's like the little girl in the Night Watch, in, mm -hmm. in Rembrandt's Night Watch. To me, that's like, like the I have, of light yeah, that, that of image, yeah. that painting will forever be in my, in my brain. But the reason it's in my brain is because of that girl. I think that that painting is because of that girl, that, that the only reason that painting is, is, one of the most famous paintings in art history is because of that moment of light. So, <clears throat> so I, I do want to, I mean, in, in many ways, um, pay homage to that kind of, you know, accent of, of light in my own way. I mean, you, you can't, nobody can do a Rembrandt, but um, I want to kind of do it in my own way. And um, so I want to do that, but it's, it's still very tricky. And I, I <clears throat> excuse me and I'll try to say why it's very tricky I'll try to explain what my brain is trying to figure out uh, 
<coughs> I'm dying over here. You want a little bit of matcha? A little bit of no. Oh God, no. <laughs> Actually, the soap would uh, would probably uh, wash down. I think that raspiness. Try to clear your throat. No, no. I think it's, it's like a uh, raspy. It's a little raspy, but I've never sounded raspy. raspy. I always say graspy. That would that would be uh, a misdemeanor. I feel. You know, I was watching uh, an episode. I'm not going to derail this. Okay, too much, but, but but we're here, so bit, you so. can go. I was seeing an episode of uh, Modern Life. <laughs> Modern Life. <laughs> Modern Family. Okay, What's maybe we should uh, <laughs> we should just uh, leave it there. Modern Family and yeah? Gloria. Yeah. Uh, was talking about. Uh, she was saying, "Doggy Dog World." Oh, Doggy Dog World instead dog of Dog Eat Dog. Yeah. Yeah. But she was saying doggy dog. A doggy dog. Yeah. yeah. So your so doggy dog moment is graspy. Yeah. Do you say that often? Well, I've said like, it. Like, oh, here. Miley Cyrus has such a graspy voice. Maybe. Well, yeah. well, I don't speak in English in oh, my day-to-day okay. -day basis. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. You would sound even crazier. I may have said it here a couple of times. I, I've never picked it up, so yeah, I think graspy. you're fine. Uh, it's like the... I'm sorry. <laughs> No. Like the video that we were listening this is, yesterday. This is like a double. Uh, that was uh, that word that you've said and has haunted you. What? Remember that you were laughing because there was a man. Oh, yeah. 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 That's funny. That's funny. So. Anyways. Anyways um, well, thank again. you for that. It's <laughs> never a derailment if, if I'm um, taking the trip with you. So. Uh, no. So. So here's what I'm what I'm um, what I'm struggling with. In terms of value. So I want her to be lighter. But the thing is, if she's lighter, there's a framing, there's a moment with her hair that frames her portrait beautifully. Um, which means that there is a, a uh, difference, a stark difference in value between everything that's going to go on here and here. So that would be her first moment. The fact that we could go light and then very dark. So our lightest moment in the painting, which would be all this mass, and then very dark. So that's kind of like a strange transition to make. Now, I would want her to feel like she sort of emanates light. So instead of feeling like light, like she's being lit, um, I much rather f make her feel like she is she is the source of light, which is a very beautiful concept. Like in Rembrandt. Like, like in Rembrandt. Rembrandt. Yeah, Rembrandt does she that. She doesn't look like she had a like a light on her yeah exactly it's like so it's not a matter of a lighting light, condition yeah. it's a matter of more of a manipulating light a little bit of value mostly mm -hmm. so that you know figures can can be the source of light like in in religious paintings they used to do that a ton with uh baby, with jesus baby jesus or and with baby jesus um mostly in like nativity scenes and stuff like that yeah. but um yeah so so if she's the source of light we can't sort of contain that light it's kind of nice to have you know that light sort of um uh inundate the the um the um uh, the space a little bit so so you know it just kind of floods uh the the light floods and affects other areas around um the space so what that would mean would mean that the areas that are darker like that that would be significantly darker you can make actually lighter so it just kind of feels like poof, it's almost like her value scale is something that's way lighter than anyone else's so the darks in her, in her, no matter how dark they would be rationally, you would just interpret them as a very light value. So that's a very cool concept. But here's the problem. Well, or not the problem, but here's the tricky part in, in, in terms of if we are constructing our painting based on value, here's the tricky part, and particularly in this painting. So I wanted that to happen, but I wanted my mother to then be a lot, many values darker. So... You know, her native value would be a lot darker because I don't want, I wouldn't want any of the lights on my mother to compete with the lights on my knees. So if she's going to be darker, there's a moment where the dark of the hair that is not as, that it's not going to be as dark is going to meet the dark, the, the darker values in my mother. And it's almost going to just blend in and sort of, I don't know feel a little weird so that's what this is what i'm anticipating mm -hmm. though because I, I can't really visualize it right now why is that weird why would that be weird because you could say like oh let it let it get lost let it be like a lost edge and that's totally fine and i i agree with that it's it's kind of fine 
But if, if all of this kind of loses shape, I don't have this beautiful kind of framing device for that head, which I want it to be like a, you know, that's a pin on my painting. It just has to be a nice moment of the painting. I, I really do feel that if this exchange here doesn't work, and if this moment doesn't work, which then sets off the rest of this, which helps you travel through the bottom of the painting, then the painting doesn't work. So, I mean, it works, but it, it won't be as nice as if it did work, as if those relationships worked. So it's kind of tricky. I, I don't know if anyone understood, you know, what I was describing, because it's still, it's a thing in my head that I'm trying to solve, but it's super exciting, but super tricky. It's really, really tricky. So, and yeah. Are you going to try to... Um I'm gonna uh, try resolve. to fail. No, no, no. With your style. knees first. My knees? Like no, my knees. <laughs> or like everything at the same time. No, I'm gonna try to see if these relationships work. I'm obsessed with trying to get this right, which okay. is not right. So. And then you'll try to make it work with your mom's value. I'm hoping. Yeah, I'm hoping. So I'm gonna do something that's kind of dumb, but I feel it's w one. On the one side, it's, it's what's going to help me get rid of this notion of drawing, which is very stiff. I never liked this drawing. Um, I tried to draw it yesterday, and I felt it was fine. And now I'm looking at my reference again, and I am, I'm like, oh, no. I am so off. So, so off. So, so I don't know why that happens. It's so frustrating. Um, you're going to cover it with Yes, white. yes. Yeah, but like the thing is... Super light. Yeah, but the thing is, that's also going to help me sort of set every, yeah. like, all my values once again. Makes so sense. let's do that first. Yeah. And I'm going to do it with a very busted, I love my little brush. I love this brush. It's, a, it's a, a round, I think it used to be, so this used to be this brush. So, <laughs> so that you can see, let me see. So it so looks like a completely different shape of brush. Yeah, because yeah. I've cut it. Oh, okay. I've gi I've given it I like it a nice haircut. It, I mean, it is used. Like a ton of use and it is used, but I've also given it like this sort of pointy but very very gnarly shape, mm -hmm. and I really like it because it it won't let me be fine with it. Just lets it just puts paint like wherever it wants to. Mm -hmm. So I actually love this little brush. So what I'm hoping I can do is this. Um, so we can do this right now, actually. So I'm talking about this like I have an idea of what I'm doing, but I don't. But it's, it's uh, my instinct is telling me that this is what I, we have to do. So we're going to try to mass all of this in. And even though it's opaque paint, I'm going to be able to see some of my drawing marks. Maybe it's not super, super obvious for uh, in the video. I don't know. Can you see? Well, we it's see more obvious here. We can see the marks 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's more obvious now that I'm kind of stretching it. So I'm, I'm really just um, scumbling that light there. So I do want... I, I, I was having, like, issues with, with this, and I do want this value to be lighter. Not as light as that, but I'm just forcing myself to to say, no, I want her to... I don't want her to be like boof, like glowing bit of light, but I want her to clearly be of a lighter value. Like I want to make that very obvious. And I mean, what you were talking about the hair makes sense because if you would do the hair very dark, yeah, Martina's hair, yeah, it wouldn't feel like her hair hair. I mean, it sounds weird, but. No, it would I'd sound like a like a. It would sound. It would look like a mass, just there. Yeah, and it wouldn't be part of her. So I think it's necessary that it has a lighter yeah. value. You know that joke you were saying with um, hair, hair, her hair. There's a painting that I did, that's called "Hairs in Her Hair," like with the rabbits and stuff. I remember. Hairs that. in her hair. Yeah, it's. I mean, it was. The same way you were trying to um, knees, my knees, 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 knees. Well, uh, no, it was my knees, just my knees. Okay. But with a K. Oh, N right, right, right. I -E -C -E. Yeah, right, right. So she's thinking about her knees <laughs> and your mom's thinking about her knees. 
It makes sense. It 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 makes sense. I think it's better than the than hairs, hairs in your hair. Hairs, hairs, no, hairs. I like that, and I, I think that's a cool painting. Um. Okay, so. And I'm just joking. I know the painting, and I know it's good, and it's a good title. But hairs in her my hair. My niece is. I mean, it's just perfect. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Um, I think we're good here. I mean, that's probably. I need to make that a little bit. I'm not gonna paint where people can't see, so I want to sort of stay within the uh, the boundaries. Okay. Okay, so we've made a mess, you know, trying to scumble this here. But like I said, I can still see stuff that's that's here. So let me try to find my drawing now. Not with line work or not with anything. We'll try to spot our darks, which obviously in this context should be much, much lighter. And we'll see where we go from. So, while you grab your brush and start that, yeah, let's say hi. Uh, Cody Winicky was saying good morning. Winicky. Hey, Cody, how are you? Prince Burbones was also saying good morning. Hey, Prince Burbones. Zala. How are you? It's like you said Dala. What's Dala? Zoe. I said Zoe. And you said like Dala. No. Catherine Poremski was saying hello, everyone. Catherine. Hey, Catherine, how are you? Aldo was saying hi, Nicolas and Danny. Made a long time, made a long time since I've been able to see one of your lives. Oh, nice. Yes, nice. yes, but you're here finally. This is so. uh, Silvestri, maybe. Bartlomier du Bosch. Okay. Saying hello, everyone. Surprisingly early stream. Yeah, we're doing yeah. it uh, for Poland, for the motherland. No, it's not very early here. It's no. 1041. But it is an early... It is an early... Yeah. Um, Earlier. Early stream. OPL, yeah. Mm, Raimo Gali, alias Sandalias, dice, ah, worst timing. No, My class dice, just ah. started. Ah, no. Pero no, Sandalias. ¿Y clase de qué? No, bueno, no mentiras, pero que está en empezó, la clase. Sí, ya empezó, sí, ya. Gabriel Pozzo. Pozzo. Dice hola, buenos días. Hola, Gabriel. Buenos días, Pozzo. Uh, Caitlin Emmons was saying, love to see you painting live. In Belgium, it's evening. Mm? Good, so evening. good evening. Good evening. Mm. And Aldo was saying, yes, that's Aldo de Silvestri. Silvestri. And XD. Did you ever use that? XD? No, I don't use it. I didn't, but I had friends that did. XD, XD. Yeah, but they did like Aldo did, like in in. If it's not in caps, how is it called in in um, pequeña letra? Oh, lowercase, lowercase, lower lower case, case, yeah. lower caps. I was gonna say. Yeah. Uh, and I never understood what it was, and they were like, "No, it's a face," and I was like, "What face?" Because I can't see it. Like that. But you but you understood what XD in caps was. Well, the face. But you were just giving them a hard time no, no, no. because they were doing no, it. No, 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 like cuz they never did it in all caps. Oh. They just thought that I would understand. Oh yeah. And nowadays like, it doesn't. Yeah, is nowadays. It's like an XOXO thing like what, yeah. what is this? But no. Took me some time to get it. Oh, okay. I'm being honest. Uh Prince Burbones was saying I'm doing well. I had to fix how far my sprinklers were spraying so my poor lilac plant would stop getting moldy. But I ended up spraying myself and poor Rooney in the process. Ha ha ha. So it's a wild morning for you, Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your lilac is fine. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so too. We have um Lengua Suegra. I don't know how to call that plant. A plant. And uh, I water it maybe once a week. Very sparingly. Not, and sometimes I would say that that's generous, Danny. No, once a week I do it. Generous. No, you never water it, but I no, do. No, no, no. Cheat. You never see me water it, but I do. Oh, okay. And it's doing so good. Yeah. Because it has one, two, three, three different babies. Okay, we're calling them babies. Which are n teenagers now because they're Okay, super we're calling tall. them teenagers. 
and she's had flowers. Mm-hmm. My sister has the same plant. My sister takes very good care of her plants, and she's never had flowers in the this same plant. We've had two times, but I had to cut it. Okay. Because chili eats the flowers, and then she. So flowers inspiring envy, mm-hmm. what they are meant to do. Yeah. My yeah. sister told me that I th- maybe I have to repot it because it's getting so big that it needs more space. I think your sister just wants to sabotage the fact that... Yeah. Maybe she wants one part of it. Yeah. If she's like, oh, you have to repot it and give me this one. Yeah. And I would. It's just that I think that repotting, repotting, no, repotting uh-huh. is a lot of work. So, and a lot of mess. Yeah. So maybe in the future. I, I I haven't changed anything about the way I deal with the plant, which is absolute neglect, because I only show her neglect, and she's amazing. So, well, she's you not can't amazing change your game you. if you're winning. Well, if you were living alone, I well, would never have a plant. Here, yeah. yeah, but if you had to, no, it I w- I would it wouldn't be me. Long time ago. Uh, Doe was deer. saying. Hi, folks. Hey, Doe. How are you? Prince Burbones was saying it's already a little moldy, but it's a hardy thing. And uh, they were also saying repotting is not fun. I feel like I need five hands to do it well. Yeah, I told my sister that mm. if we're going to repot it, I would take the plant to her house. Okay. And in her ba- balcony, yeah. we would repot it. Because then like it would a be thing. a disaster here that's like a, that's like two pounds of dirt that's like nothing like nothing for the mess that it's made you put it inside a trash bag and then you take it out and then you put new dirt in and that's it do you want to do it no i would n- again it's not that easy if i to if i show care to the plant i'm sure it's gonna die i'm sure of it so maybe i can repot it and you can clean the mess sure i'm really? fine yeah i'm fine cleaning cleaning i've never i've never ever Cleaned. Said no to like cleaning. <laughs> no, it was a joke. Um, una cuncuna okay. dice: Hola, queridos, por fin logré un en vivo. Hola, una cuncuna. Quiero saber el nombre de una cuncuna. Puede ser una cuncuna. Sí, dice cuncuna. Mm. Me, me gusta el usuario. Una cuncuna. Mm. Y una cuncuna dice. Chicos, justo necesito comprar unos pinceles. Sí. Siempre he usado unos baratos. Yo también. Y ahora quiero comprar unos mejorcitos. Mm. Estoy pensando en unos rosemary. Uy. ¿Los recomiendas? Sí, yo ¿Cuáles tengo... ¿Cuáles recomiendan? Jaja, mm. ja, me llamo Cata. Cata es una cuncuna. Uy, no le digas así. Ah, sí. ¿Qué es ahora cuncuna? Yo quiero como, saber uy, qué es un cuncuna. Uy, le dijo. Uy. Sí. Nos flaguearon. Sí, el... cancelled. <risa> Eh, cuncuna eh, yo tengo de esto que son ivory long flats y me gustan mucho entonces pues pero también yo diría que depende mucho de lo con como ella pinte porque hay gente que los eh, los planos no les gustan sí. digamos entonces sugeriría el ivory long flat o el ivory long Filbert. Entonces, el lenguagato o el plano, dependiendo de cómo se acomode más a su pintura una cuncuna. Dice, es una canción de niños en Chile, se llama Una cuncuna amarilla. ¿Y mm. qué es una cuncuna? O sea, sigo con la duda. Pues que una tenía cuna y la otra no. No, porque no es una cuncuna. Una niña un... tenía cuna. Una cuncuna no, y la otra sin. Muy bien. Una Ay, cuncuna. Bien, pero te equivocaste al principio. Una cuncuna y la otra solita. Stu, Tony, who's saying, Hi, Danny and Nicolás. Is the goal today to compress values and keep edges loose? Uh, compress values, yes. Uh, still find my drawing within those values, yes. Um, I don't, I don't know. And develop form. But develop form. We'll see. I'm nervous. Please. Don't pressure me. <laughs> eh, so, let me do this properly. What? 
you do a translation? What? Wait. I can help if you want. No. Okay. I mean, I know you can't. Mm. So, Fedor Smolin. Yeah. Was saying. Yeah. Um, hello. Good day, guys. Hey. Hey, Fedor. How are you? Um. Aldo was saying, are you removing some time, sometimes oils of your paint by putting it on an absorbing paper? Because sometimes I struggle with the texture of my paint. I have the sensation that it's too oily. Um, no, I, do, I don't quite do that. I, I've, I've done that before. And I used to use, this is going to date me. I used to use the yellow page directory or the white page directory. So that's going to sound like... Um, something from another planet. No, I still had them when I was a kid. Yeah, so I used to, th that paper was super good to soak in oil. Uh, and I remember that tip with my mother. My mother used to use it to clean It's like similar plates. to the Bible. Okay, kind of. but yeah, but that's I know, like a, that's I know, a but sin. the paper that's is similar to the paper Jesus of the Bible. Christ. No. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm not like, saying to use it. Use I'm just the Bible saying. to wipe your butt. You no. almost said that. Almost I'm just said saying that. that the paper has a texture similar to it, mm -hmm. which is yeah, toilet uh, very paper. particular. I I remember it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Um, but also the thing is that you are going don't to use very like creamy oils. Yeah. So my the paint that I use, I mean, there's stiffer paint for sure, but um, paint that I use, I I wouldn't I wouldn't describe this brand of paint as super oily. So the, there are oily er paints the ones sure. that i use you knew this like <laughs> the my medi yeah yeah those are very they're like oily creamy they're yeah, very very creamy. very creamy um but that's perfect practice aldo like if you if you if you want to do that that's totally fine una cuncuna dice es una canción de niños en chile dice es como el gusanito antes de ser mariposa ¿Cómo se llama allá? Una cristalida. Or... Mm, ah, la... ah, no, la oruga. Sí, ah, perdón, pensé, oruga. Que era, pensé que era la cristalida. La... Ah, no sé, a ver, busquemos. Yo una oru y tú cristalida. De pronto tienes razón, pero... No, pero a ver, cuncuna. Yo estoy mirando y dice, definición, paloma silvestre de color pardo purpúreo, sin manchas blancas notables y con patas rojas. Pero mi amor, ahí sale el video y es una... Es una sí, una pero mira. Pe Asociación de la Academia de, las lenguas es, de la Lengua Española dice una paloma silvestre o un autobús articulado. Pero, pero en, la, en la España, pero en, en Chile pues debe tener su... Mm. Sí, entonces es una oruga. Una oruguita. O un bus, o una paloma. Mm. Boruga. Una cuncuna dice eso, una oruga. Jaja. Ay, cacaíto. Dice hola, hola, ¿cómo van? Hola, cacaíto. Siglos. Cacaíto está en un nuevo trabajo. Ah, felicitaciones. Cerca a la casa, ¿cierto, cacaíto? Bueno, felicitaciones. Me contaron por ahí, cuéntanos cómo te ha ido. Me dijeron. Me dijeron que te vieron. Eh, Stu Tony was saying, jaja, you got this. And a thumbs up. Eh, Fedor was sending an angel uh, emoji. Like a saint emoji, yeah. maybe. Caitlin Emmons was saying a thousand years ago. And a laughing emoji. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> But it was used here. Very much. Lot. Yeah, very I much. I mean, I, I used to use it. Everyone used for to use like that. Dumb pranks when I was a kid. Okay, yeah, you could yeah. have the name of the person. Sure, sure. So you could call by the name and yeah. just hang the phone There and we laugh go. with your cousins and friends. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Was it also a thing in the US when you were in New York? Pranking? Like prank calls? No. For the, sure. The yellow pages. Oh, of course. Thing. Yeah, of yeah? course. Yeah. I don't uh, know why Bell, I thought Bell that Atlantic was... Bell Atlantic was... Uh, the Bell Atlantic pages, yeah. I thought it was more something... Oh, no. Yellow pages... And no, yellow pages. Like, if you had to... I mean, this is early internet days where not a lot of businesses were were um, in the internet. I think I even found my the the place that I eventually when I came back that shipped all my stuff to Colombia. I think I found it in the yellow pages. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, just shipping or something like that. It said shipping. So and I was like, okay, I'm gonna call these people. I think I called a bunch of people, a bunch of these companies, but and they were the ones that that eventually sort of made sense. But and did you call it with the circle fuck. phone? How do you call them in English? Oh uh, no, like um, I love the sound of it. I forget what that's called. The dial that's like yeah. a, the big big. Do you remember Kakaito? The big dial. Uh, my grandma's uh, phone. I love it. Yeah, I had a phone like that, but anyways. I no, I had it. I had it too. But the one that survived, like... The, the most? The most, yeah, was my grandma's. Yeah. I remember that. Uh, Sam Luther was saying ro rotary. Yeah, rotary phone. Mm, Juan Pablo Fernández Pinturas. Sí. Dice, Nicolás, ¿alguna vez te emocionaste hasta las lágrimas frente a una pintura? En una exposición, la de Fortuny, cuando fui a... Um, estuve en Barcelona para una... Um, una muestra de... Era como la primera retrospectiva de Mariano Fortuny. Uf. Sí, creo que ha sido... O sea, no lo digo como si fuera de orgullo que nada me ha hecho llorar más. Pero, pero creo que ha sido la única vez realmente que... Como que me he emocionado así con... Con, una pin, con, con ver tantas pinturas. Es que fue, era una locura. Esa yo exposición. lloré un poquito, ¿te acuerdas? Pues la, yo sé que la pregunta es para ti, pero yo lloré un poquito en... en... Sorolla? Sí. Mm. ¿Te acuerdas? Sí, es que es muy lindo. Ese, esa no, casa es muy linda. para mí esa casa es... Mm, es muy linda. Espectacular. Mm, Cacaito dice... Sí, es... es ba, ba, ba. Cacaito dice... Sí, estrenando trabajo cerquita de mi casa, pero tengo bloqueado YouTube. Entonces no, lo puede, no los puedo ver tan fácil como antes. No. Pero muy contenta. Gastando jeje. datos en el Uy, teléfono. no, Cacaito. Nos vas a hacer falta. Pero bueno, ojalá sea un trabajo... Muy chévere que estés contenta, que estés feliz y que nos extrañes un poquito. Eh, Fedor was saying, Nicolás, your drawing is so stunningly clear. It is useless to try to develop this through practice. This cosmic level is only given by natural talent. Okay, that's your laying it <laughs> super thick. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to ask for money now? What, what's going on For here? marriage. Yeah, wait, no. <laughs> so that was your answer? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, you, you discombobulated me with the marriage proposal. Mm, Sam Luther was saying, I prefer tin cans. Tin cans for the phone, maybe? Yeah, because they were saying rotary, and then I yeah. prefer tin cans. We used to use uh, plastic cans for that kind of uh, string phone. What? Not quite. Or I not plastic cans, no, plastic I'm cups. Oh, yeah, I get it, I get it. Yeah. Mm. Gaby Perez dice, Ay, hola a los dos, qué rico verlos. ¿Qué estamos haciendo hoy? ¿Cómo está? La Gaby, la, la Gabriela. nueva citadina. Ah, ¿verdad? Volvió sí, a... Um, volvió a la ciudad. Volvió a la, la ciudad. Vida. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo les ha ido, Gaby, en su nuevo apartamento? Su nueva vida. ¿Y qué estamos haciendo hoy, Gaby, como siempre? Nicolás pintando y hablando a los dos. Sí. Sí, ¿no? Sí. Uh, Caitlin Emmons was saying, Love the expression of the little girl. And that is ours. Like, rrr. Do I use the R a lot? I Maybe when I talk in Spanish, do I? Maybe, but I didn't notice it. What I don't know. What was I saying? I don't know. Now I'm curious. What was I saying? <laughs> 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 what was I saying? 
That was absolutely terrible, Nicolas. Well, your R. It wasn't R's. even a clear R. So. I know. It's, it's Do you know that my sister? Yeah. Um, when she was little, they say that it's like the R is one of the last letters that kids can do the pronunciation of. Okay. And no. of course, it was in her case. She would say everything with R. What so do you mean? Ma so she loved the sound of the R. Mm -hmm. So my uh, grandparent, yeah. we call him Manolo, and she would say Marorro. Oh, okay. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I was going to say more, but I would say just like name and last name and last name and last name of my family. So No, no, no but I think we get it as an yeah. example. Like so she would, yeah, she would do that a lot. That's funny. She must have just loved how it felt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the uh, pre-K, maybe? Yeah. They would say that, I mean, not all the kids would know how to do that letter, but y yeah. my sister was... Of like course. Rolling her R's yeah. nonstop. Yeah. Show off. <laughs> I mean, she was s very smart she is since very she smart. was a kid. She didn't see she blah 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 blah. Yeah. Not like me, yeah, but... Well, you can clearly <laughs> see where the, all the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. effort went to. She took all to. my R's. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. The gene pool was... With, we're out of R's, I'm yeah. sorry. Well, I mean, yeah. Eh, Gaby dice, todo bien por aquí. Amo volver a la ciudad, el caos, mucha gente, tiendas por todos lados. No me saquen de aquí. Y un corazón. No, pero usted Uy, estaba Gaby, muy rural. Sí. Cuando era rural le encantaba su era... ruralidad. Sí. Se cambió rapidito, Gaby. Sí, que es esa traición. La... <risa> sí. No pues la ciudad ser... la recibe de vuelta. No Todo bien. El, el camión del trasteo. Sí, y pero ya, ya echándole vainas al, al pobre campo. Mm, Eduardo Smet was saying: ¿Which oil paint brand do you use? So I use M. Graham or uh, Winsor Newton um, artist, whatever. Yeah. Because mm, I mean, it, I think it's Winton. Yeah, Winton's the and, um, the and just Winsor Newton. If I'm not wrong. No, they're both Winsor Newton. It's just like one is called artist and the other one's called Winton. One is okay. Yeah. Um, Catherine was saying hello, Danny Miko, Chile, and chat. Hey, Catherine. By the way, Chili is uh, having a nap in the sofa. If someone was wondering where she was. Everyone. Eh, Gaby dice, no, no. Chris amaba la ruralidad, yo la odiaba. Ja, ja, ja. ¿Y bueno. cómo le ha ido entonces a Cristian ahorita en sí. Bogotá? Y entonces a aquel que no le gustaba el, lo citadino, ¿cómo está? El pobre está? llorando. La otra mitad. Uh, Wood Spirit 100 was saying hi. Hey, Wood Spirit 100. Long time no see. Um, how are you? Catherine Peremsky was saying I cannot roll my R's. I used to drive. It used to drive me so crazy when I was a kid, and so my older sister would make a big show of how she could do it. <laughs> yeah, I you mean, have to come here for a week, and we'll teach you. Yeah. But it's very complicated for some people learning Spanish. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. that's that's. Because uh, I even remember teachers that I had in my school, that were uh, from the United States. Yeah. And when they would talk in Spanish, I mean, they would have a very good Spanish. Yeah. But the R's would let you know that they were not from here. So they were not natives. No. Yeah. They couldn't ask for a roscon in, oh. in the store. That's a shame. A roscon. A roscon. Ro roscon. Yeah. Um, Wood Spirit 100 was saying, I'm fine. I'm happy to know that. Eh, Gaby dice, el pobre aprecia la ciudad y tenemos una vista muy bonita, así que no ha odiado tanto Bogotá. Se va a hacer un curso de parapente, creo, así que está feliz de salir a la montaña. Y está escalando porque hay un 
Jim cerca. Vivir en la ciudad es lo más. Y un corazón, ¿no, Gaby? ¿Está? Mm. Pero... Bueno, muy alegre Cloud por ustedes. Nine. Qué bueno, Gaby. Qué bueno. Qué bueno, qué bueno. Y también bueno que, que Cristian también se pueda devolver a, a hacer las cositas que le gustan. Ahí van encontrando el equilibrio, pero buenísimo. Sobre todo porque no se demoran tanto para ir al trabajo y todo eso, ¿no? Que yo creo que eso es lo más difícil para la gente que vive por fuera de Bogotá. Como el commute, ¿no? Sí. <ríe> Nicolás. Uf. Tougher. Tougher than I thought. I don't know if I I don't know if it was a good idea to start with the portrait, but but we're here, so. Va a coger algo de tomar, bueno. Yeah, sure. Uf. I'm struggling to try to get my, to try to establish what my values are going to be. So that's part of the, um, part of the equation is that the, the relationship and the values that I set here is going to educate a ton of the, you know, the rest of the painting, a ton of the relationships for the rest of the painting. So it's not a, like a minor thing. So it, it is, it's good to spend a lot of time here because that's going to that's gonna give me sort of the ground rules for the, the rest of the painting. But, I mean, to do it in such a sort of sensitive, small place, I don't know if it was a great idea to do that here. But I'd much rather just tackle it then avoid it then think like okay I'll, i'll later later i'll think about the portrait or later I, i'll think about that tiny moment do you think it's easier if you can get closer to the painting uh, it would be yeah but it's but we're not gonna no because i could zoom in no 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 it's it's okay it's okay, okay. yeah i don't want it to be like oh if i was if i if i every time i think if it it sounds like an excuse to me so We're not gonna. But we're it's not gonna make excuses. Complicated if you can't get close. Yeah, but it's so. okay. It's okay. Well, if you want. No, we're I'm okay. just. We're good. We're good. One little zoom away. We're good. We're good. We're good. Not gonna complain about that. I promise. I'm gonna complain about me not being able to do it, but not. Not because there was any other reason than just my understanding. Um. Yeah, but I think it's, I think it's okay. I think I, I'm closer to what I wanted to paint originally. So that's a good thing. So that, that I'm feeling comfortable. Caitlin Emmons was saying, as a beginner, I find values the hardest to see and paint. Oof, don't worry. It'll always be, I mean, it's, it's like the most fundamental, one of the most fundamental things in painting And you could get really, really good at it, and still it's going to be tough, not just identifying values. I, I don't think that eventually that's like a very sort of quantifiable thing to do. Like values are a very, you know, sort of objective thing. You can measure value in, in, in a very kind of like distinct way. You can always, it's not a matter of interpretation. You can always say, okay, this is lighter than this. This is darker than this. And you can create like a um, hierarchical scale based on value. So it's not a matter of like, oh, this is dark or this is, well, saying dark or light doesn't quite mean anything. But let's say for painting, for a painting, you would say, oh, this is darker than this. 
you, you usually don't get into conversations or arguments with people that say, I don't think it's darker than that. It's like, no, no, no. It is like objectively darker. Like there's no, it warrants no um, discussion. So it is a thing that you eventually can learn. So that's not the problem. The, the, the hardest thing is then to use value to say stuff, you know, that you can, it becomes a tool and you can manipulate it and you can shift it in order for you to say what you want to say or to emphasize what you want to emphasize. That's, I think, the toughest and most beautiful part. Catherine Poremsky was saying, I feel like for me, color is way harder to understand that value. I almost always feel like the colors I'm using are not what I want, but can't seem to get to what I want. Mm. Yeah, color, because of the nature of color, it deals with far more variables than value. I mean, value is one of the attributes of color. So, you know, it's it's a lot more complicated than than um, exclusively um, reflecting up upon value. Caitlin Emmons was saying probably the upper master level. No, no, you'll get there. Don't worry. You'll get there. Trying to sense how light or dark I want to make these areas. Eduardo Smith dice gracias. De nada. No sé por qué. Eduardo estaba preguntando. Déjame ya miro. Eduardo estaba preguntando. Creo que me encanta decir de nada de y nada, no saber. Nada. Sí, no, solo dijo eso. No mentiras. Dijo que qué eh, marca usabas ah, ya, 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 de pintura. Todo bien, todo bien, mucho gusto, con mucho gusto. A lot of gust. <laughs> oh, wow. Small faces are, and small kids' faces, Jesus Christ. And small kids' faces, when you have, like, a ton of, like, texture underneath. Yeah, great. Great idea. And Thank you. And when you're far from the paper. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. No, trust me, that, that, that wouldn't, I mean, it would make a small difference, but it wouldn't fix, like, the things that are tough about it. When I'm painting, it's like I'm eating the paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you tend I to get like super close. I over it, yeah. Yeah. No, but when I do, like, detail stuff, like, I'm usually... I try to, to have good uh, posture, but I, am, I, get, I get up there, you know. I, I get it. I get it. It's, it's, uh, sometimes it's almost inevitable. I mean, if you look at those, like, great... Uh, Maisonnier paintings or like Barg Barg mm -hmm. oh, 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 paintings uh, that they where they paint the model where they paint I'm sorry the artist m painting a painting um, and there's usually like a model or they're painting or there's critics around like hovering around or something um, they're super super close to the painting And then you get a terrible headache. That doesn't happen to you? No. Mm. Oh, when I get super close? No. Yeah. No, no, no. No. You know, it's happening when I'm carving. Yeah. Because I've told you that I'm getting, like, headaches. Yeah. I don't know if it's because of the light. Mm. Or because I, like, focus my eyes for too long in a mm. little place. Yeah. While I carve. Maybe. I no. mean, you could be... In theory, you could be using like those because your carvings are small. You could be using those magnifying glasses that like jewelers use. Oh, but I would feel so like disorientated, disoriented, <laughs> whatever, however you say it. It was fine. Um, because I would have no idea 
like it's very hard for me when you use a magnifying glass to actually like get the touch of it really like to know the distances at all yeah of course oh i i i never thought of that no but if you if you feel like it's difficult for you to do that mm it's too tony was saying do you like do you like Anne Gale's work. Yeah, amazing. Do you know artists similar to her? Mm, similar to Anne Gale. Hmm, hmm, hmm. You could look for Daniel Shatbolt. So um, he's a he's a British painter. You you may um, enjoy his okay. work. Daniel Shatbolt. Daniel Shatbolt painting. Daniel Shatbolt. <laughs> Why do you always say a, like a lame joke and look at me? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, I love you. I love no, you. No, no, no. So I'm probably looking for validation, but not really. I always give it. Yeah. When I say a terrible Shot down. When I uh, say a terrible joke, I don't get that validation. To be honest, from you, but it's fine. Stu Tony was saying cool things. Yeah. Robin Sita West 13 <gasps> was oh. saying hello. Hey Robin I'm going to I'm going to start saying Bob and Sita. Bob and Sita. I Bob like and that Sita. Combination. Yeah, 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 power couple. The Bob and Sita. How are how are the Bob and Sitas? <laughs> uh Catherine Peremsky was saying when you keep your focal distance at the same distance for a long time it really messes with your head. I'm doing a cross stitch piece right now and it totally messes with my eyes. I think that's what's happening to me. Maybe, maybe. So you got to take breaks. Mm. Well, I'm guessing that's what you do. Or I could do. move <laughs> the carving a little bit farther, a little bit closer. Maybe okay. I could trick my brain into Yeah, that sounds like a more difficult workaround, but sure. But sometimes when you're like in the flow of it, yeah. you just, even if you have a headache, I mean, it sounds terrible, but you don't want to stop because yeah. you know you're like in the zone. In the zone. In the zone, zone. Yeah, but yesterday I was in the zone drawing, drawing my knees. And then today I'm like, it was all off. Oh, that has happened to me. It was the wrong zone. But I feel like, yeah. I'm just I parked in the wrong area. Yeah, I'm on fire, and then you yeah. see that you're actually you're burning. literally on fire. See, <laughs> see? yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, lady, we had to call the fire department. You burned the whole building. Yeah, you took the building down with you. Caitlin Emmons was saying yes, and look from a distance now and then. Yeah, maybe that's what I need. Yeah. You know, me that I'm, I am like the timer person. <laughs> I mean, yes. I always use a timer. Yes. I could do breaks because you know that I use the Pomodoro method. So I could use like 20 minutes and I could have like little breaks for my eyes. Good. That's good. Yeah, that's what I was referring to when I said you could take breaks. <laughs> but like a minute break. Yeah, whatever. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like later. Well, I thought that you, was taking I'll see a you break. This yeah, like let's go for an ice cream. I thought that was the break. Yeah. And I was kind of. Um, it's been 10 tempted. minutes. I'm good. <laughs> mm, but yeah, I have to try that. Oof, oof. And I don't have like a light touch. This is making me try to have like the lightest touch. I think that's why I, I picked this like um, flat brush. I feel that if I was trying to model this more, it would just go all over the place. My my form would just go all over the place. It would just feel like a little mush. Mush. Uh, Caitlin Emmons was saying, good from far or far from good? That's the oh, question sometimes. There we go. 
Gaby dice, yo nunca he podido con ese método, me estreso resto tratando de seguir los horarios. A mí me sirve un montón, pero sí siento que no es para todo el mundo. No, yo nunca. ¿Tú no podrías? No. No, tú rompes el reloj. No, no, yo tengo un muy buen reloj biológico. No, eh, Es no. que no, Nicolás, yo siento que lo que pasa es que no necesita reloj. O sea, él no. es como, voy a trabajar, trabaja. Y ya. Y ya. <risa> que suena súper sencillo, pero no es tan sencillo hacerlo. Y yo sí necesito como, no sé, cómo poder saber, bueno, van 20 minutos y no he hecho nada. O van 20 minutos y voy avanzado por un, helado. un montón. No, pero pues sí, a mí me sirve. Y me sirve más, Gaby, desde que... Voy a mostrarte. Ah, se fue. Tengo... Tengo este. Que es como un relojito así. Entonces uno puede como cuadrar los tiempos. Que ese es el que siempre uso. Siempre. <risa> Eh, y me sirve mucho porque antes lo hacía con el celular, entonces me estaba dando cuenta que cada vez que se cumplían los 20 minutos, como tenía que parar la alarma en el celular, duraba los 5 de descanso en el celular, entonces de pronto los 5 se me volvían 10. Ah, ¿eso tiene descanso? ¿Supuestamente? No, es que tú lo, o sea, mira, yo lo giro hasta el que quiero, entonces digamos 20 minutos. Sí. Cuando se acaban los 20 minutos, pita. Y en el pomodoro, en el método pomodoro se supone que tú haces 20, 5, 20, 5, mm, Como las 20, poses 5. de los modelos. Sí, luego haces 20, 15. Mm -hmm. Que hay 15. un más grandecito, sí. No, qué flojera. Cada hora. ¿Cada hora? Sí, pero no, en el de 25. Creo que es 25, 5, 25, 5, 25, 5. 5. Mm. O, o ahí va el 15, algo así. Pero yo hago 25, 5, 25, 5, así... Y cuando termino una task grande, de pronto hago un descanso de 10 minutos o algo así. Sí. Pero, pero no, este no tiene el descanso, pero pues lo programo acá. Y si estoy en descanso de 5 minutos acá, no me quedo en el celular. Mm. Eso es lo que estoy diciendo. Entonces me sirve como tener un relojito y no el, no el celu. Y es súper, y tiene como la alarmita. Es, a Nicolás, Nicolás la debió odiar, ¿es esta? No, hijo de puta. Es que tiene... Nunca le he puesto duro para no ser ah, bueno. intrusiva. Pero pero me sirve un montón, la verdad. Y me gusta... Ah, bueno, lo otro. Me gusta como visualmente ver cuánto me estoy demorando. Entonces, a veces lo pongo no 20 minutos en el timer, sino como cronómetro. Y puedo ir viendo cómo se va llenando esto de rojo. Y así como que visualmente puedo ver cuánto tiempo he trabajado o cuánto tiempo me queda y me sirve mucho. No, si te sirve. Sie siempre he dicho, si, sí. si algo sirve para una, o sea, a mí, no, y es que yo igual... a mí nunca me, 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 causa, me causa nada que, que otra, o, o sea, si una persona encuentra un método que le ayuda a hacer X cosa, fantástico. Sí. O sea, nunca, no me quita nada a mí, pero... No, y pues... Es que yo creo que para todo el mundo hay cosas distintas que claro, le sirven, o sea, claro. yo sé que obviamente a ti nunca esto te serviría. No, no. Pero no porque a ti no te sirva significa que yo Exacto. no lo voy a usar no, o que, que no le sirva a otra qué persona. Bobada, o... Exacto. Qué mm. pendejada, mm. qué Pero tontería. A mí me ayudó muchísimo, digamos, para la tesis. Sí. Eh, ahí en la universidad, hacer eso, como lo del pomodoro. Y yo lo usaba en el computador porque hay unas eh, páginas en internet que tú buscas Pomodoro Tracker y te lo Pomodoro.com No, y tú puedes poner, es chévere porque tú puedes poner el nombre de cada task de los 20 minutos. Entonces yo decía, bueno, voy a hacer, no sé, voy a leer... Roña. Por un, no, voy a leer una hora y cuando complete una hora tengo que parar y tengo que escribir. Y tengo que escribir y escribir y luego tengo que parar porque también tengo que tallar. Entonces me ordenaba un montón y me servía mucho. Bueno. Mm, Catherine was saying, I love the way you paint your little knees here. Those limited value scales. Oof. She looks like a fairy and I recognize family characteristics. Ay, that's so sweet. That's very nice. Thank you. I love, I mean, about the painting and about the pose that she has. Yeah. 
that it looks very um, consentida. How do you say that? Uh, spoiled, but... No, but not spoiled. Um, I think I don't know in Spanish it's different. Yeah, I don't know how we say that. Um, what? Because spoiled is malcriado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very different. Like a, like a mama's boy. So that would be no, the... No, but that's also... It also no, but that's like consentido. That's like... Um, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know how to translate that. I've never had to translate yeah, it. Yeah, so. because it says spoiled and yeah. no. And it says indulged and no. Uh, no, that's a little too much. Yeah. No, so there is a word in Spanish <laughs> <laughs> that we use, which means that like you want someone to cuddle you. Yeah, you know, like a dog, like a pet could be that, or like yeah, a little like kid. They or want to be cuddled. Yeah, or it's even like, like a person. Could yeah, be and like it's not like a bad cognotation, because well, I feel that spoiled. Yeah, spoiled, it sounds like bratish. Like yeah, sort of and mama's boy or m something like that, it also sounds kind a of... A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Could be, could be. But she looks consentida, of course, in a good way. It's like... yeah. She hurt her knee. Yeah. But now she just wants to cuddle. Yeah. To feel better. So it's very nice. Mauricio Paraguazú dice agua. hola con muchos emojis. Hola Mauricio, ¿qué tal? Um, Robin Sira was saying she's cuddly. Yes. Cuddly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's a better, like a similar word. Yes. Can always count on uh, Bob and Sita. Bob and Sita's dictionary. Thank you. I don't know why I'm so awkwardly seated today. Like I can't find my... No? posture no. no have i ruined the chair for you maybe what because no, i no. use it a lot how so. would you ruin a chair no well, it's, it's the shape of my butt no 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 no. it's i don't know i mean i'm always fidgety but today i can't find my you're especially fidgety yeah You know what we should try, Nicolas? Cocaine. Benny? What? Yes. No, I, what's wrong I'm with kidding. You know? uh, the um, water soluble medium. Oh, you should. Yes. No, we. As in, I should. maybe you should try it. Because <laughs> <laughs> now I'm carving right now. So I I, it's not like I'm going to. Uh, yes, I have to. I have to give it a shot. Do we have enough paint? I think so. Yeah. I think you ran out of white, w didn't you? Mm, Maybe. No, I always run out of white in gouache. Okay. But I don't think that I run out of that one. Because I think I did one or two paintings and that was it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could, we could totally try it out. I'd be up for it, for sure. Una cuncuna dice, que interesante que no hay mucha traducción al inglés. Son como todos negativos. Sí, curioso, ¿no? Sí, la traducción es... Sí. Como peyorativa. De pronto um, es el eh, para los latinos es, es normal eso. Una cuncuna dice en Chile decimos regalona. No, <ríe> eso acá suena, suena chistoso. Si a mí me dicen esta regalona, yo diría que Pilas. respéteme. Pilas. Calle esa boca. Sí. Eso fue una búsqueda mía. Yo no sé buscar Esta el... regalona.com. No. no. Eh, pero sí es chévere esas palabras como que no tienen... Eh, mm. No tienen traducción. Pues tienen traducción, pero no... La traducción no... Pero no es una no palabra. No logra transmitir el mismo sentimiento. El mismo... ¿Cómo dices estrenar? ¿Estrenar zapatos? En inglés. ¿Cómo estrenar los tenis? Está estrenando. Eh, 
O sea, estrenar, voy a estrenar hoy. Brand new. No, no hay una palabra. No, no hay. I am premiering my tennis shoes. Mm, premiering. Mm -hmm. Sí. <laughs> Como dices... Eh, trasnochar. Pues all nighter, all pero nighter. no es... No, porque all nighter es literal toda la noche, pero como dices, no, trasnochar. No, 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 but I pulled an all nighter. De ese se puede. Mm, you could translate madrugar. that. Woke up early. Pero no hay una palabra. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Madrugate. Madrugate. Mm -hmm. Madrugate. Suena como los madrigal. Mm -hmm. eh, una cuncuna dice, es muy latino ser consentido. Ja, ja, ja. Sí. sí, de pronto. Ay, mira, eh, Gaby dice, hay muchas palabras en español que no tienen traducción y me estresa. Madrugar, estrenar, friolento. Estamos connected, friolento. Mm. Mm. Eh, friolento. Hmm. No, no. Sí, no. Lo que pasa es que yo no soy friolento, entonces no, no uso Ay, entonces, casi esa palabra. Pero tú dices, mi mamá, digamos, es súper friolenta. ¿Eso digo yo? No. Mi mamá, digamos, no, es no, súper No, 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 yo ah. digo, mi mamá mm. es friolenta. Sí. ¿Y qué, cómo explico eso? She's, she feels cold all the time. Pues sí, pero eso no es... No sé. Eh, Catherine Peremsky was saying debuting. Debuting. ¿Qué? Debut, un debut. So de you're debuting. Debuting. Your yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, could be. Mm. Gaby dice con suegro tampoco, jajaja. Ja, ja. Con no. suegro. No, pero este ya es muy. Muy specific. Family. A ver, estoy buscando. Sobremesa. No, pero ese sí es muy... Pena ajena. Eh, cringe. Mm -hmm. Cuñado. Sister-in-law, brother-in-law. Sí, sister-in-law, sí. brother-in-law. Eh, empalagar. No, pero... No, eh, eh, empalagoso es como saccharin. Entrecejo. Mm, ese sí, el no. entre... Brow. No, but it's not the brow, it's in between the brow. I know, but it's a brow. How do you call... Uh, Half a brow. The in between the brow section. El ceño fruncido. El puente. No como el puente de puente, sino el puente de los días. De aranda. Como... No, es puente. Como festivo, es puente. O sea... <laughs> Pero es que el puente no es el lunes, sino sábado, domingo y lunes. Eh, sí, no. Creo que los ingleses le dicen bank holiday de pronto. Long weekend. Mm. Mm. Gaby dice, ¿ya has visto esas palabras que no existen en español? Sí, también hay. A ver, Gaby, ¿tiene alguna en mente? ¿Cuál es? Struggle. Struggle. Es como un esfuerzo. Malen no. Struggle, struggle. Sí, pero ¿cómo lo traduces en español? Pues un esfuerzo. No, porque si tú dices there was a struggle. Me causó no trabajo. Es, hubo un esfuerzo. No, there was a struggle between Nicolás y. En... Había un. Eh, porque no es pelea. Había un. un eh, Malentendido, no. No, eso sí tiene, pero tiene, hay algo más cercano. Eh, He's struggling with his boss. Struggling with his boss. Ese es el ejemplo. That's the example they Who's, say that. Why would you struggle with your boss? Um, no sé. Mm, 
So there is one. Okay. That I remember from school. Yeah. Toe. Toe? Dedo gordo. No, pues los dedos del pie tienen un nombre específico. De dedos. Uno solo dice los dedos de la mano y los dedos del pie. Yeah. No. So as in all, as in every finger, every finger from your foot. Yeah. No, we don't have one. No, it's... I mean, the translation in Spanish, it would be like fingers of your... Fingers of your toes. Yeah. Fingers of fingers your toes. Fingers of your toes? No. Fingers, fingers of, of your, your feet. <laughs> your feet fingers. Yeah, or feet, yeah. Your feet fingers. <laughs> fingers of your toes would be your like feet, a... Your feet fingers. Mm. Fingers of your toe? That sounds like a Rage Against the Machine song. Mm. Fingers of your toe. And it looks like an infinity. Fingers of your toe. Fingers of your toe. Um, mean. Malo. Pero no es malo. Sí. Despiadado. Mm, tampoco. O sea. Mucha hijo de puta. Mm, tampoco. Qué mierda. Gaby dice, te los mandé por Insta, Dani. O sea, Gaby tenía un post. Miremos, mm, por favor, Gaby blog, estaba mm. preparada para esta conversación. Me encanta. A ver, palabras que no existen en español. En neerlandés, nixen. Ah, no, pero si ya dedicar estamos... Dedicar tiempo de manera consciente a simplemente hacer nada. Pues, mis hijos. <risa> Schnapsidi. Schnapsid uh -huh. en alemán. Un plan ingenioso que haces cuando estás borracho. ¿Qué? ¿Qué es eso tan específico? Sisu. Sentir una valentía extraordinaria ante una situación adversa. En fin, es. Gigil. No, esto está, esto está pésimo, <risas> perdón. A ver. Boqueto. No, esa palabra es fea. En japonés, ¿qué? Ah, bueno. No, bueno. boqueto, en, ¿qué no, estás diciendo? Pues no sé, En ustedes... japonés, mirar al vacío sin pensar en nada en concreto. Pero es cuando es uno dice, estoy echando globos. Sí, sí, englobado. Englobado es, está, es eso. Drachenfutter, en alemán. El mm. regalo que le das a alguien, generalmente tu pareja, cuando está enojado contigo. Mm. Aquí es regalito de miscelánea. Cuando está enojado, mi amor, no, uno nunca dice te voy a... O sea, este es mi regalito de miscelánea. No, es como un regalo de reconciliación, sin lo, según lo que entiendo. Miscelánea son perfectas para eso. Uh, Caitlin Emmons was saying, these conversations and a laughing emoji. Terrible. Yeah. No context. Give us some um, art questions. Okay. Caitlin. Or questions. That was very specific. About whatever you want. If you want. If I want or if Caitlin if wants? If Caitlin wants. Don't make it weirder. Yeah, but now, and now you're throwing Cody her. Cody Winicky. Yeah. Who's saying, Nicolas. Cody. Is it true you did a lot yes. of plein air in Menorca? No. How oh. did you feel about that? Terrible. Um, so it is true. We did uh, a whole week. Uh, seven days of plein airing. Um, how did it feel? Um, foreign for sure. I mean, it still feels like painting, but it, it does. I mean, very humbling for me because it's not something that I tend to, to do. So it just puts you, you know, in a spot where you really, really don't almost like don't know yourself as a painter. Um, Uh, and and doing that in front of like other people, I think I thought was um, was pretty pretty nice, you know, just that feeling of uh, vulnerability and and um, it was very good. It was it was I would say it was very beautiful for me. Unexpected for the people that had to go through that. I'm very grateful that they um, that they were up for for doing something like that. But um, but yeah. Difficult. I'm not gonna lie. It was it was quite difficult. I would love to. If I had like another lifetime, I would love to be, um, you know, a a painter that could dedicate, you know, as much time as I dedicate to painting. Let's say whatever it is that I paint. I don't want to pigeonhole it, but um, 
I would love to be able to to also dedicate that amount of time to plane airing. So it would it would be a beautiful second life, I would say. Una kunkuna was asking. I have one. Okay. How do you choose your subjects? Are you taking pictures of your family all the time? All the time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh well no no I, I'm not annoying like like And you're not like posing people. No, I never well, I'm not gonna say never. No no no, but you're just usually very aware Yes about how like the people's gesture and the things that you like. Yeah. And you know when you would find something paintable? Well, I, I, I hesitate to use that term. I know I know that we were thinking we were like talking about that the other day. But I think it's not bad if you say I would like to paint this and then I'll take a picture of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I just um But everything's paintable. I know what we were talking yeah, about. Yeah. yeah. And and the fact that the thing is I I usually I'm I'm super um wary about using like um descriptions like that because it 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 almost makes it feel like the act of painting is something that um, gives like a value added value yeah, yeah you're right yeah, so i would it's correct like, my words no 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 no, no. I, I, think I would not because you say it is because i do agree with what you're saying and we had a conversation about this before Yes. And I do feel that everything is worth painting. Yes. But it's not like paint would give it an added worth. Yes. I, so I don't. Yeah. I, so I'm let's just say that you are very aware of your surroundings. Yes. And you take a lot of photos. <laughs> <laughs> and then you paint them. So I'm a photographer. No. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's you. When you pay attention, sometimes... I'm not saying that people don't pay attention, so it's not it's not a matter of that either. But um, when I pay attention to things that are happening around me, I I've you know it's one of those things that you go like yes that's a you know that's that's something that I would love to continue to investigate through painting. Let's say it like that. Mm -hmm. You know that that thing that is happening right there that instant that is happening right then and there, that is something that I wish to investigate a little bit deeper or a little bit more or a little bit more personally. I, I wouldn't say profoundly either, but that's something that I wish to observe for a longer time. I think that that's, I, I know that it's all, it almost feels like I'm dancing around the, the, the idea of why you would paint something, but it really is, I, I just don't, want to and, and and what Danny was um, was saying I I don't like this idea that when you paint something a lot of people feel that when they paint something it, it immediately grants it like this kind of special nature it's like oh that was paint worthy or look at that it was you know um, this this thing that was happening nobody cared about it and suddenly this great painter painted it and you know they showed us that yes we were blind to its beauty I don't I don't care about any of those things like any of those descriptions to me are like super exaggerated I feel. I think a painting is like a painting, you know. It in in many ways it's like somebody just saying like, "Oh, I want to plant a garden here." And then they, you know, they plant a garden and it can be a beautiful garden and that's fine, like a place for reflection and they design it with like flowers or whatever. I don't know. Whatever beautiful you know, kind of thought process goes behind in during the reflection of making a garden. But I really do believe that a painting is, you know, very similar to those things. It's just a, it's a painting. It really is just a painting. Um, it, it, it by no means should be any more or less important than any other sort of way of reflecting upon the world that we choose. Um, it's just a painting. I don't know. So, but, but I think it's, it, it's, it's a way of me reminding myself like, oh, this is my story. These are the stories that I could tell. So I think I want to spend time with this particular story for a little bit longer. And that's, and then you take a photo so you can, you know, so you can have enough, I don't know, enough information there so that you can then when you get home say, okay, we can. Try to figure out what I want to say about this because it's not like 
I want to paint the picture. It's like, I took the picture and I want to paint the picture. I think that's the, the, the sort of um, lowest way that you could define that. Like the, what would you call that? Like the easiest kind of denomination of, of, um, of the painting act. You could just say, oh, I, this was pretty. I took a picture. I'm going to paint it. Fine. Yeah, that works, I guess. But I don't know. Not Sometimes I take pretty pictures and I have no intentions of painting them. Like none at all. And, and I don't even know if they would make for good paintings or pretty paintings. Um, and sometimes I, I'll take a photo that is just the perfect sort of starting point for a painting. Like it's just everything that I need to begin my reflection in terms of, of trying to solve this eventually through paint is right there. It's like perfect. It's almost like it's giving me just barely what I need to do the painting. And and then it's reminding me that, you know, the, the painting that will happen is something that lives beyond that image, that kind of photo that you just took. So, yeah, I would say it's those those sort of things. Mm. But I do often say, like, I'll I'll spot something and I'll just be like, oh, stay still, and then I'll just, and then enough people know me and my family to to know that, oh, okay, you know, let's stay still. And many times I take a photo and it never amounts to anything, like. I think I've taken probably hundreds of photos of you. Yeah. And it's like, I, I don't think you you ever, you've ever told me like, so where's the painting? Oh, no. No, no, no. no. It's like I saw something and it's a reminder of something. And then, I don't know. Then I think about it more. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with like, oh, it, it was a bad photo. It's like, no, it was just, I, or I don't know. Or I have to try to figure out better, like, why I thought this was going to work or I don't know. Hope it makes sense, but... Una Kunkuna was also saying, I love the little girl, by the way. She looks like a baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. Um, Psycheles. Okay. Psycheles. I don't know how to say it. They were saying, is there a reason why you use a saturated magenta for finding your drawing? Just Have you tried oh. any other colors? So... Uh, maybe they can let me know how to do a better pronunciation. Oh, wh wh what's the spelling? S-J-C-A-L-E-S-S. -S -S. Oh, I have no idea. Yeah, I think you did a good... Uh, good Attempt. Yeah, good uneducated guess. Like the best one that you could. Uh, why do you why magenta? magenta? So I can see it. That's the only reason. They were saying, have you tried any other colors? No, because it's the, the, like it serves no other purpose. It's just so I can see it. Um, it is um, originally when I did it, you know, many years ago, it was just to try to find my way. It was just mark making when I was lost. That is the real origin of any of these marks. And they're not trying to be pretty. They're not trying to be anything that's why i cover them up and i don't feel like i miss anything like oh no don't i mean that's there, there's been paintings like eventually i started seeing some sort of i don't um value in them for for how the interplay between like the dialogue between those marks and some of the paint you know it was curiously um inviting i guess or i don't know but it was never meant to be that initially i promise you i, I wasn't trying to find like like I, there's so many people that write to me that oh i love your style and i was like dude if you could get into my brain and realize how you're defining style what i was trying to do when i was doing this originally you would you would see that it was just being lost I mean, it was, if anything, it was style born from just absolute necessity because it, it didn't, like, it didn't matter what the th thing would look like at the end of that process of searching. What 
what I, all I was trying to do desperately was find my way. It literally was trying to like say, oh shit, I lost my drawing. It's frustrating. Like I, it's not working anymore. I have to do this thing again to try to find my way again. So there was nothing about it that screamed comfort to me or, or th that, that it became, I don't know, that it was nice about it. It was always like, ah, oh, fuck, I need to do this to like, you know, to try to make sense of this image again. And it's not fun. Like you don't want to like, sometimes I've drawn stuff and redrawing it. That's not fun. Like you always hope that things sort of work out initially and that you go like, yes, that's it. I hit it. Like if you hit it once, like simply, you don't have to do so much work. Like you just, you're happy that y like your clarity brought you there in a very, very sort of simple, um, uh, effortless way. And the best of paintings feel effortless in a way. Yeah, I mean, they could be sort of labored, but they feel effortless. Labored in the sense that, you know, there's a lot of a lot, a lot, of things happening, but it feels like it's all organically there instead of like painting, taking like one step forward and three steps back, which is how I feel when I, f when, when I think that I'm lost in a painting. So the, the origin of this was just feeling lost. And, and then saying, I need to use devices that other painters have used because obviously tons of other painters have used like drawing devices in their paintings. I need to use devices that I'm comfortable with. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable introducing them into my own painting so that I can kind of, you know, make sense of it again. And, um, and that's what I ended up doing. So... So yeah, so it hasn't become like a thing that, oh, I wonder what this would look like if I use like, I don't know, let's say phthalo blue or if I use like a green or if I, you know, take into account what I'm, what I'm going to paint um, on top of it so that I can use complementary colors or that I can use a saturated color on top of something that's going to be gray so that it generates some sort of contrast by temperature, contrast by you know, complementary colors, contrast by hues, contrast by value. No, it, it was, it's never been that. So, so yeah, so I try not to give it so much thought and, and I'll just call upon it when I feel like I need it. And that's about it. Mm. I hope that's a, that's a, that's a good answer, but that's as, as honest as I can give you an answer. Caitlin Emmons was saying, which pencils are this? So no, it's not. Oh, it's a lining brush. Yeah. So I use one it's of these. Paint. So I use and and you sort of saw me at the beginning use it. So I use one of these like a lining, like a rigger brush or a lining brush, and I just use medium. I use an alkyd medium so that it flows, and I use quinacridone magenta, and then it's just freehanding it. Because I don't think I use a mall stick for. Um, did I use a mall stick yesterday? I don't know. I, I was Did you see me? No, no I wasn't. I wasn't even paying attention either. Um, I wouldn't think so. I, I've been using it more because my hand it hurts and my wrist hurts and my um, elbow hurts and my shoulder hurts. <laughs> so the whole mechanics of my arm hurt. Um, and this alleviates the pain because I don't have to, you know, force my shoulder to bear the weight of the hovering arm all the time so i've been uh, a little more humble because i hate mole sticks because i trust my hand more than a mole stick um but i've been a little you know i i've stopped whining about it and i've tried to use it more and more now and it's helped a ton to be very very honest it's helped a ton mm. Caitlin Emmons, Emmons was saying, oh, thank you. And uh, Sigalis was saying... Signalis. I thought so. Thank you for the answer. Also, my name is kind of a pun of Sycamore. Oh, so Sycamore So instead tree? of Sycamore, it's Sycalis. Oh, Sycalis. there we Sycalis. go. Mm -hmm. Let's 
see. I don't think we Kate. have sycamore trees. Mm, it's like no. a, an American tree. Caitlin Emmons was saying, I loved when you did that acryl painting. I had no idea it was possible to paint with it and look like oil. I love oil, but not the mineral spirit so much. Uh, the acryl gouache or the... Maybe acryl gouache. Or the acrylic paintings, maybe. We've done, we've done uh, acrylic gouache paintings. We did... Um, we Wash did uh, water soluble, water miscible oil paint. Yeah. We did gouache gouache, mm -hmm. like Danny was saying. Um, jelly, and the jelly gouache. Himmy jelly, the jelly wash. Himmy, <laughs> himmy Jim jelly gouache. Jimmy's Jimmy gosh. jelly wash. That car wash. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Caitlin Emmons was also saying, I take a lot of photos of my family too and like to paint them in another meaning. Mm. Catherine was saying, I have always struggled with moving away from the reference photo. It's my constant struggle. Yeah, and especially with family, it's very difficult. It's very, very difficult. I still struggle. You could ask... Uh, Danny about it. Danny has pointed out to me at times where I'm doing something that is, let's say, it it's working regardless. As a painting. Yeah, yeah, it's working regardless of if there is a likeness there. The kids. But I struggle a little bit more when, for example, it's um, Fer. Samu or Fer. Yeah. And and I I'm missing like I'm totally missing whiffing on on the likeness i'll it'll get me frustrated to the point that i'm like oh this is a bad painting and then he goes like it's not a bad painting it's just that you're frustrated because you think that you're not um you're not painting fed or you're not painting samu and that sort of blinds you a little bit into um in recognizing the value that the image may have just because you're only uh sort of evaluating it as something that would be um, of value if it if it translated uh, faithfully what you know what you see in in your loved ones and and the truth is that that it's tough but it's something that we need to liberate ourselves from um, because and and I rationally know this like nobody knows like what your you know kids look like nobody really even cares what your kids look like like they don't live with your kids they don't know how they smile or how they grin or how they pout or how like you know all these things and you love those things about your kids but nobody else does so they're all going to judge the the way in which you present them you know as as viewers in which you're presenting the, you know these characters that are part of your images um it's going to be completely different than just saying, oh, it looks like them. Oh, this totally looks like uh, your mother or, oh, this totally looks like your niece. Like nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to care. Chances are they're going to, you know, the 99.9% .9 of the people that are going to see your paintings are never going to know what your mother looks like or what your niece looks like or what your dog looks like or nobody's going to care. So, the painting has to work in other places. And, and we sometimes forget about those things because they are our loved ones. And, and the, the pull, the gravity pull is so big when we paint people that we love and we care about that we, we sometimes forget that there needs to be something else. I mean, think about this. Bonnard, Bonnard Pierre Bonnard, he painted his wife for the last like 30 years of his life. And if I had to tell you, can you recognize his wife? Would you be able to recognize his wife from every single painting, from all those like dozens and dozens of paintings that he did of her? Would you be able to recognize her? And you could say like, well, it's Bonnard. Like it, there's no, there's, it, like it's, it, 
serves no purpose to try to um, evaluate his paintings you know, as something that could grant you the ability to distinguish a likeness. But then I would say, well, it's because it's a painting. It's because you're reminded that it's a painting. It's not, it's not supposed to be something that, you know, that, that in the way that we think of it, like, oh, it's honoring her, so it, she must be recognizable there. I'm sure for him, she was there, like her presence was there always, like the paintings were only possible because of her. But it doesn't mean that we as like ignorant observers of his life, we we have to, you know, in some strange way, like glean all this information and, and think that we are familiarized with everything about the people that are in there because of these attempts at painting. So... It's very tough. It's a tough thing when you're painting loved ones. It's very, very difficult to try to understand the place in which those images should sort of exist, I feel. It's very tough. Caitlin Emmons was saying, acrylic with your daughter and her book. I have so much videos to catch up with. <laughs> oh, I think I know that one. Me too. Yeah. There was... um. That was that was all acrylic. Oh, I feel yeah. it's very washy. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why I thought it was gouache, but yeah, very kind of almost watercolory at the beginning. If I'm not mistaken, I think I know the one that you're talking about. William Felipe dice, "Hola, cómo están?" No. Hola, William Felipe. Where do I do the line? ¿Qué más? No, eso suena raro para un colombiano. Fatal. ¿Qué? Where do I do? Sí. Ay, Where do I draw the line? Eh. Además, nadie va a entender eso, eso lo decimos entre tú y yo. ¿Y William Felipe? No. ¿Dónde hago la raya? Hago la raya, sí, pero la traducción es solo entre tú y yo. Um, Catherine Poremsky was saying, the thing that always makes me laugh on Instagram yeah. is my popularity with middle-aged surgeons slash doctors Ooh. who either love children or puppies. LOL. <laughs> well, you have a very niche market What? there. You should take advantage of it. I mean, it's doctors. Well, but uh, I mean, she could take advantage. How? The, the having a surgery? No, no, no. I mean, just go to doctor conventions with your portfolio of yeah. like puppies and kids. And uh, yeah. But that is very specific. It sounds a little <laughs> creepy too, but. William Felipe dice, ha ha, ¿qué? ¿Cuál raya? <laughs> Nadie entiende. ¿Dónde hago la raya? Donde hago la raya es como... O como, sea, es... Como no, a ver... Milagro, sí, no, como pero un momento, hay gente que entiende esa expresión. Sí. sí, no. ¿Qué le pasa, William? ¿Debajo de qué piedra ha estado? Mm. Donde hago la raya se dice como, como que uno tiene que hacer una marca porque algo que no sucedía... O sea, uno quiere conmemorar el hecho que algo suceda como con una marquita. Gaby dice, jaja, yo tampoco entendí. ¿Qué? No, pero no es marca de eso. ¿Dónde hago la raya? Como cuando uno cuenta un. Sí, dos, por eso, ¿dónde hago una cinco, raya? Como, como para donde decir. Hago ¿Dónde hago una raya para, para decir que algo pasó? Sí. Gabriel Pozzo dice, van dos, Nico, ¿qué está pasando? ¿Should I be worried? Sí, <risa> ya he hecho dos referencias fatales. No, ¿dónde hago una raya? Se dice no, como. Cuando le hiciste el chiste do... en inglés. Ah, has pues hecho sí, dos... pues, pero porque se fue, se fue. Se Catherine Poremsky was saying, sadly, they are all bots. In a laughing no. emoji. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Ese pozo, las, las, las únicos comentarios en los que brinca. En lo, único que, en lo único que ha oído. Sí. Hemos hablado dos horas. Sí. Um, sí. Los únicos comentarios que lo despiertan. Muy mal, Pozo. Jeff Aikov was saying, estaba diciendo, hola Nico, Dani y Chili desde Holanda. Y Jeff Aikov. Aikov dice, baby Jesus. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Vi un um, video. Ajá. Uh -huh. Es como una mesa y ponen a dos personas como en un date. No sé. Bueno. Pero. No sé a dónde vamos con esto. Es muy chistoso porque... La vieja se sienta y dice, I love Jesus. Y el man entiende, I love cheeses, obviamente. Cheeses. Como cheese. O sea, ella dice, I love como Jesus. Como cheese it. 
como de queso, mi amor. Sí. Ah, cheeses. Entonces él es como, yeah. oh, I love it too. Eh, Ay, provolón, yo no Ay. sé qué. Y la vi hace una cara como sí. de que me está hablando. Y él como, ¿qué dijiste? ¿Que te gusta el queso? No, Coco, es muy bueno. Lo tengo guardado en TikTok y te lo tengo que mostrar. Porque bueno. siempre está muy cerca. Muy cerca. Baby cheeses y baby cheeses. Pues baby cheeses, no sé. Baby cheeses. I love Jesus. What did I say? Jesus or cheeses? Oh, God. <laughs> um, Bartlome, Bartlomie du Bosch. Ah, dien dobre. Was saying, I always thought your line work was semi-intentional. On some of your works, I assumed it's the influence of Hellboy's Mignola. Oh. The Moody Geometry. Ooh, la la. Um, uh, I mean, I can't not think that Mignola has influenced me because I adore him. So, yes. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's... Uh, But I mean, the line work, as you've said, it's something that... Oh, it's more like, Uglo, more Giacometti. Yeah, there's lots of um, yeah. painters before. Yeah, I would say it's more Coldstream, more Giacometti, more Degas. It's more around, like, direct influences, right? They're probably more around that area than um, Mignola. Although, I mean, it it would be very hard for me to say that Mignola doesn't occupy like a place in my brain constantly. So, William Felipe dice, ah, uff, nunca había escuchado eso, jaja. Mejor la vieja confiable, qué milagro. Qué sí. milagros. Qué milagro. Qué más... ¿Qué más dichos hay así? Ay, tengo uno en mente y... Mm. O sea, estoy... Dichosa, en... dichosos... Los ojos que Los no ojos, ven. sí. No, pero tengo eh, otro en la cabeza. Eh. No me acuerdo. Gabriel Pozzo dice, jaja, nada que ver, estoy trabajando Estilos. mientras los escucho. Empecé a leer el Year One de Frank Miller y Uy. me acordé de Nico. Una Uy, carita feliz. increíble. Incredible. Mm, William Felipe dice, ah bueno, pero espera. Daniel Martins, usen muy tu bonito. Obrigado Daniel. <risa> Obrigado Daniel. William Felipe dice, oigan, se acuerdan que empecé a pintar de nuevo. Tengo unas preguntitas. Claro William. Oigan. Suéltelas. Oigan, dejen la huevona. ¿Se acuerdan que estoy este pintando? Es un canal de pintura. Sí, ¿se acuerdan que estaba, se acuerdan que les había dicho que estaba pintando? Betty Cow saying hello, happy to catch you guys live after Veruca a Salt. while of only watching videos. Oh. Hey Betty Cow, how are you? Eso hay un como un un regaño. Of only watching. Yeah. Vods. Supongo que es videos, ¿no? Videos, video, video on demand. So that's that's what they they call like um, if you do a live like a pre-recorded video but then it's on YouTube that's like a Vots? yeah so yeah like the repetition of it yeah exactly oh, so that's what she meant that's what she meant yes Jeff Akov was saying love it when you guys are on early oh thank yeah. you Tamara Torres Dice, hello, chicos. Tamara. Hola, Tamara, ¿qué tal? De Lampica. ¿Cómo está, Tamara? Tamara, 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 mamá. Mm -mm. ¿No? No, no. Mm. Caitlin Emmons was saying, do the tattoos on your hand mean something Ooh. special, Nicolás? Mm, no, um... Uh, We welcome new people. Uh, they're, they're, um, the only tattoos that I have in my hands, in my arms, and my neck, in the sides of my neck, are uh, my children's drawings. So, yes, very uh, special to me. And these particularly are cows because they're a way to uh, remember my father who passed um, eight years ago. He used to work with cattle uh, quite a lot. So it's, um, it's a very kind of easy way to, to have both my kids 
and a reminder of my dad uh, in my hands. Caitlin was saying, oh, cool. Thank you. Briley Moreno. Moreno. Saying, hi, guys. Hope Mo you've been well. Moreno. Happy Moreno. Tuesday. So let me see if you could get, if you would get this, uh, Danny. Oh, God. Moreno finally rang the bell. This is um, playing off of something that we watch on Netflix. I know Moreno the reference. Moreno rang the bell. So what happens if you ring the bell? You sold the property. Yeah, well, we don't have properties. Us painters, we're always going to rent. You made it? You so, sold. So he... Oh, so he sold. Briley sold oh. his uh, first painting. Oh, Briley. Congratulations. Yeah. That's so cool. That is a momentous <gasps> occasion. Ring the bell, please, Briley. Oh, fucking yes. Ring the bell. Yeah. And he sold it for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. His first painting. Wow! So. So yeah. Yeah. Hit it big. Totally yeah. like out of the park. Ring first the bell swing, and go to. A I don't know to wherever. Buy vacation. an island. Yeah. Now, mm, congrats, yeah. Um, Moreno. Yes. William Felipe. Mm -hmm. Dice, right. bueno, tengo un papel canvas chévere. Sí, y cuando le aplico yeso o acrílico, se dobla resto, ¿cómo hago para que quede plano? ¿Y por qué? Y dice, vi un video de que uno puede engrasar la pintura para resaltar What? los colores de nuevo. ¿Eso se sí. puede hacer con liquid? Bueno, un momento. También mucha... una veladura se puede hacer con liquid. A ver, mucha cosa. Cal calmado, William. Y Gabriel ah, Pozzo bueno. dice, William, yeso por los dos lados. Sí, pero William, si es un papel canva, o sea, el papel... ¿Tiene una trama que parece un lienzo? O sea, ¿ya no está preparado? ¿Quiere echarle más? So Bradley was saying, woohoo, thanks so much, guys. Haha, <laughs> not 250k. 200, 300k. <laughs> Because Caitlin was saying, congrats. And Cody was saying, dame, dame. Dame. How do you even say that? I've never got the pronunciation. Oh, did he write D-A-Y-U-M? No, D no, that's how I read it. But no, oh, no, you could write that. So th that's a very sort of 2000-ish way of saying damn. How do, you, how do you say damn? Damn. Damn. Fucking damn. Damn. Fucking damn, no. Just, I'm just asking damn. for the damn. 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 Fuck. So... Cody was saying, damn, damn. Briley, congratulations. Damn, dude. I'd say, damn, And dude. Catherine was saying, dude. congrats, Briley. 300K. <laughs> big leagues. So, uh, One William painting Felipe. in big leagues. Entonces, eh, las tres preguntas eran, mm, que se le dobla el papel canvas, que mm -hmm. cómo hace para que quede plano. Mm -hmm. Y después dijo, viene un video que uno puede engrasar la pintura para, entre sí. comillas, resaltar los colores de nuevo. ¿Eso sí. se puede hacer con liquid? Eso se llama como oiling out. Uh -huh. O sea, eh, como la superficie se oxida, digamos, la... pasan dos cosas. La, el sustrato sobre el que uno está pintando está absorbiendo la pintura y al mismo tiempo la pintura se oxida. Y esas dos cosas hacen que muchas veces, dependiendo del pigmento, Dependiendo la carga de aceite que tenga el pigmento, la carga de aceite que tiene la mezcla de, de, de medio más pintura que uno utilizó para pintarlo. Dependiendo de muchas cosas, pero por lo general lo que tiende a pasar es que se oxida y se vuelve un poco más mate. Y hay veces se vuelve irregular la superficie, es decir, unas zonas se vuelven más mate que otras, porque hay... Porque hay pigmentos que unos son más, más transparentes de nuevo, naturalmente que otros. Entonces, eh, para homogenizar la pintura nuevamente, es decir, para que toda la pintura se vea como eh, eh, de una manera mm, más consistente y no teniendo como esos parches, eh, existe una cosa tradicional que se llama como oiling out, que es que uno coge una cantidad mínima de aceite, o sea, mínima es mínima. De esto no es ensopar así, pasar una brocha con aceite a toda la pintura, no. Tiene que esperar primero a que la superficie esté seca, totalmente seca, totalmente seca. Y lo que hace es eh, coger en un trapito, como que le hace cluc, cluc, así con la botellita al, al trapito, 
y luego le pasa eso a la pintura, pero suavecitico. Y no se debería levantar nada de pintura, nada. Por eso tiene que estar seco. Nada, sí, seco, 100% seco. seco. Y lo que hace eso es como humectar la superficie para que usted pueda no solo ver los colores con los que originalmente pintó, sino que no está pintando sobre seco. Hay personas, por ejemplo a mí, no me disgusta pintar sobre seco. Pero yo, antes de hacer esto que estaba haciendo, le apliqué una capa de líquina todo delgaditica, que uno no debe hacer, entonces no haga lo que yo hago, por favor. Eh, pero se la apliqué como para volver a ver, para aislar el dibujo, aislar estas marcas de dibujo, que no, eh, y para, para ver los tonos con los que ha pintado, porque ya se han muerto, muerto, ya se han vuelto <risa> super mate. Eso era lo que estaba tratando. Se habían muerto. Eh... Mm. Entonces, eso fue lo que hice. Y lo otro que preguntó es... A ver... ¿Una veladura se puede hacer con líquido? Sí, 100%. Siempre. Incluso es un medio chévere para hacer veladuras. Y también preguntó... Dice, ¿si tiene trama no le hago nada? ¿Qué es trama? Es que, es no, que hay papeles es que, que son no, preparados. No, no, espérate, dice, sí tiene trama. No, pero es ¿No que... le hago nada? Pero es venga. que me falta una coma y William Felipe. Pero... William, es que me describió el papel. ¿Cómo fue que lo describió al comienzo? Un canvas. Sí, pero es un canvas, o sea, es un pedazo de lienzo. Un papel canvas chévere. Es que, es que William muchas Felipe. veces los papeles, lo que usted describe como, a ver, o que me no sé, foto sí, para... sí, mándele a Dani una foto, pero es que lo que usted de pronto está describiendo, esto, esto yo estoy especulando un poco, es que hay muchos, digamos, eh, pads, muchos eh, eh, blocks como de papeles que venden, que ya vienen preparados para pintura. Tienen como un gesso de una vez. Entonces, es como un papel, digamos que no necesariamente es un papel, pero es como una fibra, lo que sea. Hay veces son sintéticos, no importa. Pero es, es llamémoslo una, una hoja. Eh, pero es, entonces, en esa, esa lámina ya tiene una preparación ahí. No hay necesidad de echarle más gesso. O sea, si usted le quiere echar, todo bien, pero no necesitaría echarle más. Y la sugerencia que le dio Pozzo, finalmente, es buena. Y es que el papel se pandea porque hay una tensión eh, sobre una, una eh, cara del papel que es mayor que la otra. Entonces uno las trata de equiparar y es poniendo eh, el mismo número de capas de un lado y del otro. Uh, Liad was saying hello. Liad. Hey, Liad. How are you? How are you, Liad? Um, Bradley was saying thanks, everybody. 300K. Cody was saying, damn, Danny, we got to work on this. Yeah, on the on your damn, yeah. Yeah, and it says D-A-Y-U-M. I would damn. read the Dayum, Danny. No, that's <laughs> Alpha Yum portraits. The Dayum portraits. <laughs> Dayum, Yeah, Danny. the Middle East I mean, Dayum if portraits. if someone writes that, Dayum. I would say Dayum. Dayum. If that's a username, I would say yeah. Dayum. Yeah, yeah. No. That's Dayum, like a damn, Dayum. damn. Dayum. There you go. That's that's not bad. Damn. Well, how was it? Yeah, that was a little. That's. <laughs> that no, no, no. Loud. But you're good. You're good. Yeah. Damn. Damn. The thing is, I don't know how. I don't know. Damn. No, but I just I always read it as damn. 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 Damn it. Fuck. What? How do damn. I use damn? You damn. don't. Damn. I don't use damn a lot. Damn. Dude. Fucking damn it. Oh, why I say damn you, it. Why do I you say add? Fuck, damn it. Like. Like more fuck? words. Because I'm trying to link other words to see But if I just, just use say, it. Oh damn! That I don't say oh damn. Oh fucking damn! I'm I'm seeing if I, I if I have no, connectors if you? I have like connectors for that's damn. That's not your only connectors. I It's mean, used to like fuck do better than that. Fuck or what are you? Chill fuck, out, Nicolas. You fuck want is like uh uh. <laughs> your connector. Damn, Danny. Um, yeah, it's a connector. It's a, it's a, it's a, no, it's, an actually, it's an emphatizer. Emphatizer. Um, it emphasizes stuff. Van Sant de la Noir. Saying hi, de Dani and Nicolas. Hey, Van Sant. De la Noir. How are you? Uh, Caitlin Emmons was saying, do you do live painting too, Danny? No, I don't. Uh, I am... Recording another video. I'm gonna do like a short video of the carving I'm doing. So yeah, I hope to do more of those. But no, 
I mean, we've talked about this here, but yeah, we have very different um, work, like timing for our works. Yes, let's say it yeah. like that. So I'm a very slow painter, slow carver, and yeah. And I also, as I was saying some time ago, I kind of eat the paper when I'm painting. So I have no idea how I could put a camera so you guys could see something else than my So if somebody didn't head. understand the reference from before, she she's very close. Well, I eat my paper. Yeah, it's like yeah, I'm... Yeah, it's not like Colombians eat paper. No. Um, Liad was saying I've been a bit under the weather oh. oh He was saying no big deal Nicolas Yay. sorry I haven't DM you I no, will today dude. after your stream Dude no. take your time Don't yeah. worry about it And we hope that you feel Feel better, better That's soon. always the most important Liad. thing mm. No rush William Felipe dice, ah, super, mil, mil gracias. Mil y mil. Mil y mil. Mil y mil. William Felipe es como un joven y un abuelo al tiempo. <risa> pero tú también dices eso de mí. Sí, tú también, 100%. <risa> no, pero tú dices que soy una abuela en un cuerpo de joven. Sí. Y además una abuela como de 1882. <risa> sí, porque yo muchas veces digo cosas y cosas dices, que eso lo decía... Sí. La mamá de mi papá. Sí, cosas que uno... uno en, Tú has visto esos, esos videos de Bogotá en los cuarentas y sí. que son AI que los colorean. No, no he visto. ¿No? ¿Viste son increíbles. De, ¿Viste lo de AI de um, como ¿De los qué? mensajes subliminales? O sea... No. Mira esto. ¿Los mensajes subliminales? Pues como que es una imagen, Ajá. pero tienen oculta una frase. Ah, pero chévere. sí. Ah, como los gatos, cuando vi unos gatos que decían Kingdom como... Uh, sí. No, 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 yo vi unos gatos que decían... Gatos. I'm sorry, that's... No, it, no, no. This is super out of context. No, I, I saw the cats that English, said... Uh, what did they so say? So we're talking about the AI-generated images that say something hidden. So look at this. So squint your eyes. What? Obey. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Very cool. That's really intelligent. And there's a lot of that. Let me see. Yeah, it's super intelligent. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing as in uh, the, the fact so that images. Oh, stop it. Oh, I see two and faces. Here, no. Where? Oh, that, there I see it. No, well, here, yeah, but no. I was That's incredible. One. Let me see. Oh, I saw it now. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty that's cool. AI. I mean, it's but we do AI. that. Like the skulls, the yeah, ladies yeah, yeah. with the skull. Well, but I think that you can just add the prompt. Crazy, isn't it? That's so. crazy. The world is ending. Let's yeah, enjoy it. One of the cats. Let's paint because the world is ending. <laughs> um, Let's just paint. Cody was saying, we say damn Daniel in our house a lot. Damn Daniel? Damn, damn Daniel? Daniel? That's what pretty good. What does Daniel do? No, that's just like a thing. Like, uh, like relax, Francis. And why? Relax, why? Francis. Why? Damn, oh, Daniel. Oh, it's like the... Um, I, I even know. Alliteration? No, D -D? no, no. There's also Double a D's? name that people call in the U.S. Okay. It's like a lady's name. Okay. The, where are we getting? With like a curse or with a no, thing? No, it's like a saying. Um... Uh, let me see if there's there's let me think if there's names probably people can help us by out. By Felicia. Oh, yes. by Felicia, but by Felicia is by like Felicia. by Felicia. But that's a name. Yeah, but that's from a movie. Yeah, but I had no idea what that yeah, was because yeah, yeah. that's not something you say here. No, no, or no. Or no, no, damn no, no. Daniel, it, it, there's not no. Yeah, like, damn Daniel, I don't know. Those if that's are from the movie. kind of references that. Oh, that would be a little. If lost. you're a for foreigner. Yeah. Foreigner. If you're a foreign nerd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A forehead nerd. A forehead nerd. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't get. No, you would. If you go you there. You would not get that. No. Yeah. I remember when my sister was living in the U.S. She told me that there was some things that people say. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's not like if you learn English, you would learn no, what that means. No, no, no. That's conversational, yeah, which exactly. is totally different. Yeah. So, I remember that she was like, I was just like smiling and smiling way no effing idea and i just went to my phone yeah and try to google what it was so yeah it, that's the best thing like oh i have to go to the bathroom and just google it yeah, yeah but you know me i mean if someone would say 
by Felicia and so I have my no name idea. is it's Danny. Like, no, it's Daniela. Yeah. yeah. Well, if they say that to you, you wouldn't be in good terms with them. So something something would have happened for them to say that to you. I would still go back to them and it's like, no, it's Daniela. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would Daniel. then I yeah, then I would, then I would probably have to eat a punch, you <laughs> yeah. know, for, for you. <laughs> I'm probably yeah. now with a black eye. Um, Liad was saying the F word is the ultimate connector. Yeah. Mm. Gabriel Pot, so dice, Pot, ¿cuándo so. lo podemos ver, Dani? Not pushing. Eh, no, se no, no, pero me, me gusta, me gusta que igual se, que la gente se emocione de ver mi trabajo. Entonces, muchas gracias, Gabriel. No la he terminado. No, pero eh, está muy bonito. Tuve un pequeño inconveniente. No, no es inconveniente. Y es que moché la nariz. <risa> Me mochó la nariz. Corté la nariz de la talla. Uh -huh. eh, entonces estoy arreglándola. Mm, y me había demorado un poco, pero porque estuve haciendo muchas otras cosas. Pero ya por fin, pues yo creo que ya estoy cerca de terminarla. Tú, tú. Eso sí, he grabado un montón. Y al final termino editando un minuto. Perfecto. <risa> Entonces, lo que me demoré en terminarla y en editarla, pero yo creo que pronto, muy pronto. Muy, muy pronto. Fantástico. Y gracias, Gabriel. Gabriel Pozzo. Pozzo. Mm, Daniel Martins was saying, estaba diciendo, Nico, ¿cómo es la pintura con cera de abejas? ¿Deja algún, algún impasto? Daniel. Eh, sí. Sí, el impasto es increíble. Es, es lindísimo. Muy, muy bello. El impasto. Muy bello. Eh, pero es muy complejo. Muy, muy complejo hacer, eh, Tuño, hacerlo no. bien. Pero es que no sé... O sea, no sé cómo será abelias. ¿Abelias? No. Abelias. <risa> Las abelias. No, no creo. A ver. Abelias. ¿Cómo se dice abeja, Daniel? Daniel. ¿Cómo se dice Abelia? ¿Cómo se dice B? Abelia. Abela. Abela. Yo sé, yo parlo. Abela. Abelia. ¿Es con H-A? H-A. Abelia. Será de Abelia. Será de Abelia. Yo tenía razón. <risa> ah, Daniela siempre. <risa> Daniela siempre. Ah, Daniela. ¿Qué es eso? No sé, es por tuño. Mi amor. Daniela siempre eh, duda. Dice, Mucha acera duda. de Abelia acera de o Abelia. acera virgen. Virgen. Sala, acera virgen. Eh, qué, qué vas a no decir? sé, ya <risa> se me fue todo, ya me, me, me mataste el impulso. No, Daniel, es, es lindísimo, pero tiene que hacerlo súper bien. Entonces tiene que conseguir cera de abeja y tiene que conseguir eh, damar en resina. No damar solo sino damar en resina. No, no barniz damar, sino los cristales de damar. Y esa es la parte como más... Daniel Martins dice, Abelias. Abelia. 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 ¿Dónde está antes? Caitlin Emmons was saying, Yes, I saw your beautiful work on Instagram. Oh, thank you so much. Caitlin, I'm so happy that you liked it. Um, Abelia. Catherine was saying, I'm sorry if you already mentioned, oh. but what colors are you using right now? So, I'm using, well, I'm mostly using just ochre and raw umber and white. So, titanium white, yellow ochre, and raw umber. That's all I'm using for this. And what's the but palette? But the bigger expanded making? palette would be white, yellow ochre, Terra Rosa, which I didn't really use, and I thought I was going to use it right now, and I didn't. But Terra Rosa, so l actually, so no, let's take Terra Rosa out because it's not really anywhere in the painting. So white, yellow ochre, uh, raw umber, and ivory black. That's the, and the, that's um, the palette. And the and what? Liquid? And yeah, as a medium for the overdrawing, The second layer drawing, I used um, Alkyd Medium, I used Liquin, and I used Quinacridone Magenta. Plus. Plus, yeah, yeah. Liquin yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, no, but the initial, I'm not using liquid now. And when I uh, blocked in the painting, I didn't use liquid. Mm -hmm. So liquid is, is, was used exclusively just to make this flow. And what those paper is it? This is a moleskine paper. <laughs> <laughs> Moleskine paper. Yeah. Yep. And what brush? Uh, kangrui. Mm -hmm. Kangrui. And what chair? D sitting, uh, sitting on Mercado Libre chair. <laughs> And let's see. Mm. Tamara Torres dice, estoy feliz de poder verles. Siempre es muy difícil para mí coincidir con ustedes. Tan amable. Ay, qué bueno, Tamara. Tamara, que pueda estar por acá. Estoy viendo que no se me haya olvidado ningún comentario de nadie. A veces cuando nos metemos en conversaciones... Como que Dense, me salto sí, los... De las importantes, de las... Sí, de Abelia. Abelia. Eh... Abelia. Caitlin Emmons was saying, which brand of oil do you use and do you thin it? So I don't. I use uh, M. Graham, which I think cost benefit is like really good brand. And I'm brand agnostic, so they don't send me paint I, i'm not an ambassador for any other paint i i don't i don't accept anything from brands or anything so so don't worry about that so if i say i like something it's because i like it which doesn't mean anything it just means that i like it that's as deep as i can get with that but i don't really quite care like if you gave me shitty paint like i'll paint with shitty paint that's fine um but i do use uh, in, in terms, again, of cost benefit, I think M. Graham is really good, you know, for profes professional paint, which means like for, for you know, um, pure pigments. I think it's a really good brand. I really do. Um, and I use uh, Winsor Newton. So a mix of those two. Yeah. But any paint will do. Like, it doesn't matter. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Abelia. Any more comments about Abelia? Eh, uh, no. no. Abelia, no. Abelia. Caitlin Emmons was saying Sorn. They were saying Love Moleskin. Catherine was saying It's amazing what you do with it. Those little hands. Not what you do with those little hands. But yeah. I mean, they are smallish. They're not. No judgment. Um. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Take that as a compliment. Liad was saying, Nicolas, have you used any of the paper that is made for oil paints? Like the... Yes. Uh, Arch. Arch. Arches, yeah. Or anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've used it uh, when people take my workshop. Um, I don't buy it. But I've used it, you know, with other people's paintings. So I have painted on top of them. And they're very good. Yeah, there's a bunch of, a bunch of those that are very good. Yeah. They're all good. Sayamis was saying, love your work. If Thank you were you. trying to break in the industry Oof. and get your work known nowadays, Oof. what would you do? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, that's a tough question. Like, uh, the world was so different. Like, the art world. I mean, there's, uh, there's things that are still the same in the art world. And there's other things that are so, like, ridiculously different from when I first started um let me see 
because I do feel like I am lucky enough to have one foot on the way things were and one foot on sort of how things are nowadays. Um, so I kind of get the best or the worst of both worlds, however you want to see it. Um, oof, but what would you do nowadays? I would definitely, I mean, I would definitely use social media for sure. I don't think that you need to um, go through a super traditional kind of, you know, gallery and going to group shows and hoping that you sell uh, whatever you send to a group show so that they invite you to another group show so that you can sell everything that you sent to that second group show so that they finally say, okay, you apparently enough people out there want uh, your paintings. We're going to give you a chance to either um, be part of a two-person show or have a one-person show, you know, in, let's say, year and a half. And then you just you just roll the dice and hope that everything turns for the best and that you do really well on that show so that they keep supporting you. Like, that's the traditional way of doing things. Um, but I would say nowadays, I don't know. I think you do need you do need a bit of everything. I don't think you can just, you know, hope to make videos on YouTube and, and think that everyone is going to, like, you're going to hit, like, this mass level of, of like appeal and interest. Um, I don't know. I think, well, the first thing I would ask is what do you want to do? Like how, what type of artist do you want to be? Do you want to be at the Venice Biennial? Like at some point, do you want to be at like, you know, uh, you know, these, these huge um, art fairs? Do you want to do Basel like in Miami, for example? And do you want to eventually sell like uh, Moreno, uh, like Briley for hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, when you make your first sale. Uh, is that the artist that you want to be? Like you want to be in flowers or do you want to be in Tate, you know, modern? Or do you want to be, you know, how do you envision yourself as an artist? Um, do you want like the big accolades? Do you want the big money? Do you want to be a huge name? Um, or do you, are you fine just being an artist, you know, within your community? Uh, are you fine being a local artist, like, you know, not very well known, but, you know, cared for and, and respected? Um, do you want to teach? Do you want teaching to accompany uh, what you do? Um, do you want to be a commercial artist? Um, I don't know. There's, there's so many, you know, like, like being an artist doesn't mean one thing. It means like an enormous variety of things. So you have to first determine like what it is that you want to be, like what type of life and what type of future you envision for yourself as an artist. Because um, there are artists that say, I want the world to see what I do. I want, I just want to be popular. I really just want every single person out there to know me, to know my name, to consume me. You know, there are people like that. So um, I think it would be super, super important for you to determine like what sort of artist you want to be. Um, if, if that's a little too much and you just, you're just going like, I don't know, that's, you know, that's a little complicated. All I want is for people to notice what I do. Then, um, I would say how desperate are you for people to notice what you do? Cause there are people that are desperate nowadays, you know, and, and they, they find ways of being noticed that will guarantee that you'll be noticed, but it doesn't mean that that's going to make you a great artist. So if you make, I mean, if you make like a, like a dumb short that becomes viral and you are, you know, in immediately recognizable and, and, you know, people just share your work like crazy. Well, it doesn't have to be a dumb. Thing. Well, I mean, well, but I think that there is people. Okay, if you or if you do like a very intelligent, like if you hit it, like start a, a selling career, let's say, yeah, because of something like that. And I think that it's not dumb. I mean, most of them are kind of dumb, though. Mm, but I don't think it. I I wouldn't say so. that a lot of them are are just 
I mean, I, I kind of honestly think that there there are ways to make like those those videos that are interesting ways. But usually what makes for a viral video is something that is just so it's something that you can't really control that well. Like a lot of people are it's, that's why people are super um, um, uh, surprised when things blow up. They go like, oh, my God, this blew up. Uh, here's my links and here's my patron and send me money and because they don't expect it it's it's almost like you don't you never know you never you no, never yeah, ever I'm know i'm just saying that i don't think it has to be a dumb video i mean i think I, I you're right you're right i think i i didn't say i didn't mean dumb as if i wanted to say that everyone that's creating content in youtube or making shorts it's kind of making stupid I mean, stuff we are yeah and yeah I'm intending to do for example more more of the short videos yeah yeah Th this is this is not like this is this is not um an assessment of how valuable these these uh these videos are some of them are are you know some of them are worthwhile i would say but i would say most of them if not a lot of them they live in this place that they're supposed to be consumed and forgotten like and, and you have to be also kind of aware of that like it, no, there's no, no, no i'm just saying that it's not it's not a place where you, you you're going to make something that's super weighty and 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 dense and intricate and complex it's not it's not a place for that like if it like mm. if your work is nuanced it's not a place for that because nobody it, just the the whole nature of consuming something that lasts 10 12 seconds or a minute means that you're not going to be there for a long time means that you're going to be bombarded by something that you think it's worthwhile only to then notice that the whole world is speaking about why men think about the Roman Empire. And then two weeks later, everyone forgot why. It, like if you would ask somebody now, oh, did you, do you think about the Roman Empire? People would be like, oh, dude, that is so last week. Like, please, get a life. Like, we're over that. That's how that shit works. Like, sadly, that's how that world works. And... If you want to insert yourself in that and be sort of a slave to that world, oof, like that's fine. I would say we're not. I would say we're not because we're honestly, that's not, we make those videos, but we don't make a living off of those videos. No, and it's we don't. Very have, different. We don't have a lot of viewing. Exactly. So it's very but different. I would say that, for example, if one of our videos went viral, that hasn't happened ever, but if it did, I yeah. wouldn't assume that the video is dumb. I would be Just shocked. I would be surprised as to why. And then I would be like, but is this something that we can measure that we should emulate that we should, how do we, how do you build upon something that feels so arbitrary? Yeah. But I think that things that are interesting can also go viral. Sure. So. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry if I was just like generalizing. And of course I'm not like, you know, you, you make new content out of our content. And I, I was obviously not, saying in any way that that the things that you do are dumb so no, no, i'm no, sorry I, if if it sounded like that way no, no, no i wasn't getting it that way i wasn't like a no 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 but anything. i but i apologize but for that that there's a lot of people nowadays that find in social media and in short videos or in tiktok or whatever a way to get more people to know what they do and i was just saying that those efforts don't have to be dumb no so, you're so right i just i mean no and i get that you're saying that sometimes there's dumb I just things don't. that get viral and the thing i is, know I, that the thing is i don't know i i think it would be very tough to say okay could you name me like i'm not putting you on the spot i like this would be a question for everyone like could you name me a visual artist that seems and i don't mean relevant in a way that as like part of like the topic of a conversation like top of mind i don't mean that sort of relevance i mean like like something that you know that you could i don't know you could have like cool conversations around that you could discuss like in a class or that you could like build from that or or like grow from that you know good art is supposed to it doesn't matter what it is but it's supposed to like spur conversation and it's and, and you go to bed thinking about it and you wake up and you're like wow that kind of messed with my head and i want to grow from this but i don't know like even for me i mean i don't consume too much like social media but 
I don't, I wouldn't be able to tell you who is like, who is an artist that was born in social media that has developed in social media. But it doesn't have to be that an artist that was born in social media. That's what I'm just saying. It's just a way of diffusion of your right. work. Yeah. But so, for example, the video of uh, the Can't Help Myself from Sun Yuan and Peng Yu. What? The Which robot that collects blood. Oh, right, right. Okay. I knew about that piece because of uh, internet. Oh, because okay, I but saw that's the video. A broader conversation. That's why I'm saying it's not like something that you post has to be like a shallow thing. Oh, it's not just no. like a well, tiny thing because you can share a painting that you've been doing for six months. But I think those are two different things, Danny. I think that's like a that's a record of an already amazing you know piece of art but it went viral what i'm trying right. to say but it's because it's an amazing piece of art yeah. and and the way that you just you know you put it in the wild was like a lot of people sharing that video in social media Yeah, but it's amazing that but it was never meant to i'm sorry and I'll, i'll 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 try to finish what i'm saying and and then you can go but it was never it wasn't a piece that was created so that it could be part of a social media it was just somebody recorded something that was very cool But it, it was already very cool. Like it was actually installed in a museum or in a fair. I think it was in an art fair. But it, it wasn't like the nobody was thinking like, oh, we're going to make a viral video out of this. No, but as I opposed to what I'm describing, which is like, oh, how do you get like a lot of people are like super thirsty to get popular using social media and they create content based on the tools that social media is giving you so that you can be popular i think there's a huge difference between those two that are like one of them is like oh yeah internet you knew something about the internet you knew something that you didn't know because the internet found a way to share it with you yeah but i think that that could apply to a lot of things i mean we do you do the paintings and we do the videos and i think that they're are great because of the painting itself not because we think about them as creating a content and then we share it short what i'm just trying to say is that there's a lot of content that has also a, like a great value behind it and it's not think about and it's not like being created just because of it being a short or of it being a 60 second video or a 10 second video It's just that it's another way of showing the things you do. So, yeah, no, I think I, I, and once again, I apologize if it if I made it sound like like every bit of media that is like, you know, put out there, um, you know, has has no, you know, obviously it has like a, a, a ton of work put into it, a ton of thought put into it. I would say not all of it, cause a lot of it is just you know, again, can be purely accidental, but, but I mean, so I apologize. That, that's, that's not what I was trying to say, like, like to, to diminish uh, somebody's, you know, anyone's work that is editing a video and putting it together and, and thinking like, yeah, I'm going to swing for the fences. Like I want this to be as popular as it can be. Like, that's not an easy feat you know, in and of itself, like that's crazy to think that, oh yeah, all you got to do is try to make something popular and then you're going to be able to do it. That's crazy. That's ab absurd. Like things that are popular and, and get like mass appeal are, you know, hitting that is one of the weirdest and toughest things that you could ever think of doing. So, so no, 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 that I'm sorry if I sounded dismissive, you know, when I said that, it's just that I, I would say that it is, you know, For every single moment that is that is carefully sort of curated and and sort of you know ensembled and edited and 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 it's thought provoking and it's interesting and it's kind of cool or it's fun or it's I mean it doesn't have to be super dense it can be super fun or but it's well done I think that there's like you know hundreds of thousands of videos that are just like thrown out there just to see if it, if something sticks to the wall just to see if Yeah, I'm gonna throw it like Hail Mary. Uh, let's see if this let's see if this makes it. And if it doesn't, it's like fine. We'll do another one and see if this makes it. And if it doesn't, fine. We'll do another one and another one and another one. I just think that oof. And I think it the 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 toughest part about that line of work is that it enslaves you. I feel like there's people that every day 
try to figure out what YouTube is pushing, for example, or what mm -hmm. Instagram is pushing. Like, oh, no, they changed. Now they're doing this and they adapt. They are like, okay, we were thinking of doing this with our next video. We should change it. Like we should yeah. focus, focus more on this. I think that that's garbage. I think that, you know, when, when you become so aware and when you realize that you are shifting your own practice because these external factors that you have no control over, no control over, think about that, which is insane. Like the reason, for example, that I became an artist, it's not like this idea of control as in, you know, I want to control. No, but it just gives you control over your life in a sense that, you know, these are things that you want to say and you can actually control how you want to say them at what pace you want to say them. It's very beautiful. Like the, 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 I think it's a good sense of control over a message. Um, in, in our case, like a visual message, but it's a beautiful way of communicating, you know, the thing that you want to communicate. But imagine if like you are trying to do that, but you're also having to answer to this completely arbitrary you know, thing that is, is, um, that you're beholden to that is telling you, yeah, I'm not going to show your video now. Last week I was today. I'm not because we changed this and you're like, Oh fuck, I gotta like adjust. I gotta alter so that, you know, hopefully they can put my video in the most eyes. Now I just, I can't imagine like a more demanding, stressful, like horrible job than just keeping an eye out for how this thing just constantly shifts and changes on a whim on a whim because there's no reason for any of that i can't take i can't stand it i really can't so there's tons of things about it that i just really dislike and i that's why i don't think that what we do what we do fits under whatever it is that youtube is but in many ways it's not i mean we we don't we really don't make an effort to try to make our channel grow. It'll grow as it grows. Like it'll just grow. If, if it, if it grows, it grows naturally. If it doesn't, it won't. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. It's okay. But what I was just trying to say is that if something gets viral, yeah, it doesn't mean that it's following all those things that you're saying that no. I know that there's a lot of people that follow that. Yeah. Th just like trying to be in trend and getting to yeah. like, hop in the train of, the trend yeah and trying to become popular just the train the train the trend yeah. yeah i don't think that that's how all of the people that get a lot of visibility i mean i know that that's what a lot of people do but yeah. it's not what all of the people that get visibility do if that right. makes sense yes so that's why i'm trying to say that if someday some of the shorts that we do become viral Ooh. i wouldn't think that they're if one day we make the briley moreno money the briley moreno yeah. yeah if we get the briley moreno visibility it yeah. doesn't mean that our content is less interesting just because it became viral yeah yeah because so i do think that that happens a lot that people assume that oh it's viral equals it's dumb or that's it's like that's probably why i generalized it like unfairly generalized it and like i that. i was just trying to clarify that i don't think that's how it is because i think that there's people that are working and they have an amazing work even if they don't share it online they have an amazing work of course yes and if it gets viral then it is amazing for them because more people can see their amazing job Right, but not because it's viral. Yeah, but that's that like the internet. That's like you're speaking like I totally understand what you're saying, but I think what I was trying to get at from the beginning that you know that there are people that are just thinking like I'm going to use social media and they say, "Okay, I'm going to be an artist that uses social media so that I can get my work out there." And then they say, what is the most efficient way to get my work out there? Because I'm not well known. So what, how do I make my work? You know, how many, how, what way can I have the most eyes on my work? And then they, you know, a lot of people, they start looking as to what's trending. Like, 
you know, oh, you have to do these sort of videos with this type of music and maybe fit in these themes and use these hashtags or link it with these people. Mm -hmm. And they're just constantly sort of pursuing that thing that seems to be like the answer to those, to the issue. And my point in all of this, and, and perhaps I, I, I got a little bit lost in the weeds in trying to answer this, but my point would be that none of that can none of it none of that can replace good work none of it yeah i don't care how popular I you get i agree 100 percent with that yeah so i don't care how popular you get you could you could have like the most viral video ever and you can have the most eyes on you ever that i don't know if the egg stupid post i mean we could call that stupid yeah. even though like a lot of people i'm sure somebody did the thesis on why that post was popular but I'm not saying that you can't reflect upon society, you know, and 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 try to figure out why no, but, as a society we picked. But I know what you're saying. It's like the starting egg. point of that. It's dumb. It's it is it's dumb. Just for it to be. And it was and it, it and it was proving like a... that it was like the most arbitrary thing in the world. Yeah. And and we chose that. And and we as a collective we we said yeah let's make the most dumb arbitrary thing in the world the most popular thing in the world, but. So, but, but there's no, like, nothing mattered. Uh, aside from that, which is kind of strange, nothing mattered about it. Nothing. I, I, in fact, I don't even know who did it. I don't even know what posts came after it. And I think I represent the vast majority of people that knew about the egg, you know, was ma thought it was fun, that it was becoming the most popular thing. And then I just didn't look into it anymore mm. because it didn't bear like I didn't I, I, I nothing about it said to me this person behind it or this team behind it they must be geniuses I'm gonna follow them forever like no it was just a dumb exercise that proved that it was dumb and it it almost like proved its point which I thought was fantastic it was fascinating it was great but I think that like you said there's people that don't show on social media that are amazing artists mm -hmm. like I have more followers than uh, Ruprecht von Kaufmann, and I'm like I'm never going to be the painter that he is. Like he is leagues beyond me. He can paint circles around me, and he just doesn't care. Like he's not an artist that lives in social media, and that means nothing. Like the fact that I have X number and he has a tenth of X means nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. So I would say. First, make sure that your work is strong, like your work is meaningful and meaningful, you know, can is defined in, in many ways, but meaningful to you, like that yeah, you're like saying something, something, you something that proud of. Yeah, you're saying something like I think Jerome Witkin says it like um, that you're going to paint something as if as if th you're going to go down with your boat, as if you're a yeah. captain on your boat and your boat is going to sink. And you're going to say, you know what? I'm going to sink with my boat. And it's like, it's like, make it like, make it worthwhile. Like ma s tell people like this, like fucking commit and say, this is what I believe in. This is what I love. This is the story that I'm going to tell. Yeah. And, and I think we've said this before and it's like, I know that it's hard to, for some people to share th or for the majority of people to share something and, don't get the response that they want. Yeah. Because nowadays you're just like hurt. attached to yeah. numbers of likes and shares and comments and whatever. Yep. But what you're saying is true. It's make something that you're proud of, even if you don't get the likes you thought you were gonna like you yeah. you were gonna get, or the shares or the comments that you expect to have. I mean, just have a s like a super solid base. Yes. So that you can know, okay, it didn't make, like, it, it wasn't the success that I wanted to in social media, for example. Yeah. But I'm proud of it. Yeah. And it's not like, okay, I did something that I hated and it, that I thought that it was dumb and it went viral. And now I have to do more of that. Yeah. Now you paint yourself into a corner where you're like, oh, fuck, what does this mean? Yeah. So, so, like, so I think that we, we, got to a middle ground that I find that is amazing and it's just knowing that you love the things you do so if it sticks with one like it's fine and you'll continue to do that happily 
And if it maybe went viral, you know that you're doing something that you love. Oh, yeah. And you're sharing something that you love and you don't have to fake something because you went viral with the thing that represents you. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and you're right. Like if it's a I'm, I'm sorry, but if it's a stupid video, but you love making stupid videos Just stick to it fuck, yeah. you're gonna have the time of your life because you're doing what you love and yeah. it seemed to work so or if it's like a super complex painting or a super complex animation that you're uploading and it went viral but you love it because it is complex then also as you say fuck yes it's like y yes do it yeah and, and it's something that you love and it's something that you're not ashamed of and it's something that represents you And yeah. I think that that is cool. And, you know, you were talking about an artist. For example, I love, now that I said animations, I love the shorts that Andrea Love makes. The stop motion? Yes. Yeah. And it takes a lot of time yeah. to do. Yeah. But it's like a 30-second video. Yeah. And I think it's genius. But And if she would put that outside of social media, it would be genius. But inside of social media, it's genius too. I just, I just don't feel that things have to be dumb, just because they are part of a platform no. like TikTok or like Instagram. And well, I know that that's not what you were saying. No, no. But you know that that's part of a conversation that's been going in the art world. Yeah. Like it, it gets less value if you want to upload it to Instagram or to TikTok. Um, and and I don't yeah. think yeah. that that has to be the thing. Uh, what I would, for example, using your example, um, what I would what I would hate to happen, for example, for with an I'm saying for example like a thousand times, but what I would hate to see was for an artist that was, um, let's say, a stop motion animator, and they you know they put their work out there and suddenly there's you know, millions of eyes on it and they love it. And, and you go like, oh my God, this is amazing. Finally, it's like some recognition. I've been working for the last three years on this little short. People are seeing it. That's incredible. But then how social media is like, oh, what else? We love this. What else Give have you? Give us more. Yeah. yeah. What else are you posting? What else are you doing? Like, yeah, in that, I want to follow sense. your account. Like, what else? What else is there? Like, I want to see more. I want to see more, more, more. And you go like, oh, I'm sorry. It's just that that little thing that you saw, that snippet was the last three years of my life. And it's going to take me another three years yeah. to show you the rest of like, you know, that short or whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm being, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I'm like, not everything is suited to be like, oh, I want to consume your work right now. And I want to keep consuming your work because that's what people think is relevance is like. You post something and then you post something else. And if it's not as good, it's like, uh, yeah, I, I made a mistake following you, like unfollow. Or if you post something and it's like you post something else and it's like, oh, this is really good. Like, I'm going to keep an eye on this person. Or But that's like an platform. insane amount of pressure, like thinking like, yeah. oh, every time I post something, it has to be excellent for or the same X platform, amount of people. I'm sorry. The same platform does that, too. I mean, you could have amazing posts. But if you have one post every four months, then you're not relevant. Yeah, nobody's. They, they It's won't like be they interested. don't even show show it to your followers. You're no, right. No, the platform's so, going to be like, oh, d are you expecting us to share, you know, your work with people, and you've you haven't been here for like three months? Like, fuck you. That's what YouTube says. That's what Instagram yeah. says. That's what any so any sort of these things say. Yeah, and I do think that there's different ways of becoming a slave of social media. One of it is that, like trying to keep keep up with the pace that you are supposed to be posting in, yeah, which can be terrible. And more for for example, for people like me that work very slowly, I wouldn't know what to do. No, I would know what to do. I would just keep on posting at my time because I know that if I try to rush the things I do, I'm not getting. Uh, Like something that I would be proud of showing. So I wouldn't show it. But I know that that's a way of getting to be a slave of it. And also what you were saying at the beginning, which is just like hopping to every trend and, and trying to like hit the jackpot 
yeah by what what's like what's relevant and what's cool or what's being like followed or talked about i mean there's but 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 sometimes you hop into things that don't even represent you yeah and don't even go with your work or with who you are so there there's people that are in part of the teams of people that work in social media that their sole job is to analyze why something